Xiao Tian just seized a spaceship only to have it crashed into by a girl. It turned into a giant firework. To make amends, the girl decided to pay with her own body. Just a moment ago, after Xiao Tian wiped out everyone from the Blood Rune clan, he blew a breath over the valley, lifting up the entire valley's ground. After all, cleaning up the battlefield is everyone's responsibility to protect the environment. Immediately afterwards, Xiao Tian took Xiong Yangming into the captured spaceship. It was even more spacious than expected. It was controlled by magic arrays, and powered by many huge spirit stones. Xiao Tian sat in the main seat, yawned, and ordered, Puppy, control the spaceship's array. Go to Green Flame Mountain to get a Green Flame Pig, then return to Prince's Palace. Puppy obediently replied, Yes, Master. Then, he patted Zhong Yangming on the shoulder. You've worked hard before. Go get a Green Flame Pig later. Cook it for me to replenish my strength. Zhong Yangming awkwardly smiled. He could be touched by even a single wrong word, but he still obediently said, All right, Prince. No problem. Very soon. Under the spaceship's rapid speed, the two caught a pig and returned above Prince's palace. Puppy told Xiao Tian, Master, we have arrived. Xiao Tian got up and stretched. I'll have someone modify this spaceship later. It can totally serve as a means of transportation. It's best to find the people from the Blood Rune clan and make them compensate us for our losses. Just then, Puppy suddenly notified, Master, Bai Qing is approaching. Xiao Tian was initially indifferent, so what if she's approaching? What does it matter? But the next second, a roar of thunder came from far and near. The spaceship's floor was suddenly smashed open. This white-haired little dragon lady just came in by smashing her head through. Both Xiao Tian and Zhong Yangming were shocked. Is this girl also starting to make dramatic entrances? But before the two could react, Bai Qing smashed through the top of the spaceship again and flew out through a hole, leaving only the flickering light of thunder. After flying tens of meters more, Bai Qing finally stopped, her expression bewildered. Did she just fly too fast and see things wrong? How could Xiao Tian and Zhong Yangming be in that spaceship? Unsure, she considered going back to check, but that spaceship was already falling apart. The hole she had made began to crumble. The next second, the spaceship broke into two halves, with golden electric light flickering constantly. Xiao Tian grabbed Bai Qing, quickly moved away from there, and in the next second, the spaceship that had been split in two hadn't even hit the ground yet. It exploded violently in midair, turning into a huge ball of fire. Xiao Tian was holding a green flame pig, staring blankly at his own spoils of war. My spaceship, my money, my compensation, all turned into fireworks. Both turned their heads simultaneously, facing each other. A wave of unspoken emotion spread. Finally, Bai Qing turned her head away, not daring to meet Xiao Tian's gaze. She really wanted to say this had nothing to do with her. Soon after, inside Prince's palace, two figures, one tall and one short, stood face to face. Bai Qing looked apologetic, very sorry. For some reason, seeing this warship, this shuttle, especially seeing the Blood Rune clan's insignia, she just couldn't help but act. Zhong Yangming quietly dragged the green flame pig towards the kitchen. Xiao Tian was expressionless, pausing between each word. You, oh, me. Bai Qing could only answer honestly. I don't have anything too valuable on me right now, and given my amnesiac state, it's difficult to compensate. So, I could repay with my service. You can order me to do things as compensation. Xiao Tian squinted at this clueless girl. Judging from the current situation, it doesn't seem like there's anything you can help with. Bai Qing thought for a moment, then clenched her fists. Next time you fight those two empresses, if they bully you, I can protect you. Xiao Tian awkwardly coughed. No, no, you can't get involved in that matter. What should we do then? Bai Qing sighed. You took me in, and I ended up ruining your things. Xiao Tian seemed to think of something. You said you acted impulsively when you saw the mark on that warship. That suggests they were targeting you, or rather, they were using you as an excuse to get to me. Bai Qing nodded without hesitation. Possibly, maybe me crashing into you was predestined. At this, Xiao Tian fell into thought. Now all you need to do is recover your memory and find your home. Then you can pay me back for the spaceship. Two birds, one stone. You just said you'll do anything I ask, right? Bai Qing quickly nodded. Yes, anything you want me to do. Xiao Tian's mouth curved into a small smile. I've heard that physical activity helps stimulate the brain, and amnesia usually has some conventional solutions. Later, the two empresses came to Xiao Tian's prince palace, both thinking that they must sleep alone with Xiao tonight. However, as they approached the prince palace, Zi Ruoyan and Luo Fengyuan looked shocked. Did something happen? They hastily used their power and rushed toward the palace. When they stepped in, they were stunned by the scene before them. What the hell is going on? They saw Xiao Tian comfortably lying on a recliner that had been intentionally adjusted to a certain height. In front of him, Bai Qing was suspended in midair, swinging back and forth like a pendulum. Every time she swung towards Xiao Tian, her head would collide with his, and then she would swing back. The two stood there, dumbfounded. He's sleeping so soundly through this. In that frequency, it's so consistent. Luo Feng Yuan suddenly looked excited, her body trembling slightly. This is so interesting. What are they doing? Is this a special form of training? Zi Ruoyan, looking at Luo Feng Yuan, who seemed to have lost her senses again, yelled, Have you lost your mind? How could you find this amusing? We need to rescue them now. With that, Zi Ruoyan hurriedly moved forward, extending her hand to dissipate the spiritual energy that was suspending Bai Qing, and then caught her as she fell. 
Xiao Tian heard the commotion and groggily opened his eyes. Seeing Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan, he stretched and yawned. You're back? Luo Feng Yuan quickly approached, asking with anticipation, Brother Xiao, were you guys practicing? If so, can you hang me up and do the same? Xiao Tian wordlessly stretched out his hands, squeezing both of Luo Feng Yuan's cheeks toward the middle. What nonsense are you talking about? What kind of training involves hanging people up and swinging them around? Luo Feng Yuan pointed at Bai Qing defiantly. Isn't that what you were just doing? After setting down Bai Qing, Zi Ruoyan checked her over carefully. Finding no issues, she finally sighed in relief. Thankfully, she's fine. She then turned to Xiao Tian, slightly annoyed. You weren't actually thinking this would help her regain her memory, were you? Why not? Xiao Tian grinned confidently. I believe she must have remembered something by now. He then looked at Bai Qing with anticipation. Bai Qing touched her forehead thoughtfully, finally saying, other than a headache, it doesn't seem like I've remembered anything. Feeling drained, Xiao Tian let out a long sigh. How is that possible? I remember hearing that a good hit on the head could restore lost memories. Listening to this, Zi Ruoyan was dumbfounded. What kind of bizarre idea is that? Where did you even hear such a method? Scratching his head awkwardly, Xiao Tian explained. I heard it back in my hometown during leisure times. Speaking of his hometown, Xiao Tian's eyes suddenly lit up. Another idea flooding his mind. Speaking of which, getting shocked by electricity might also work. Bai Qing, you can control lightning. Can you strike yourself? Bai Qing extended her hand to feel the power of her controlled lightning. I could give it a try. Hearing this, Xiao Tian was visibly excited. Then let's. Before he could finish his sentence, he suddenly felt a cold chill from behind. He turned around to see Zi Ruoyan looking at him furiously. Quickly changing his tune, Xiao Tian said, let's quickly have dinner then. Zhong Yang Ming, is my pork ready? Almost there, prince. Zhong Yang Ming responded. Hearing this, Xiao Tian swallowed hard. An angry wife is truly terrifying. That night, everyone sat down for a hot pot dinner. When the specially made green flame pig brain was ready, Zi Ruoyan split it in two, half for Bai Qing and half for Luo Feng Yuan. Annoyed, she told them both, eat this to nourish your brains. She then looked at Bai Qing with resignation. It's one thing for brother Xiao to fool around, but why are you joining in? Bai Qing picked up the pig brain from her bowl and stuffed it into her mouth, chewing as she answered, if there's even a slight chance, I'm willing to try. Luo Feng Yuan immediately chimed in, exactly, you're too serious, Z. As she spoke, she tried to pour more pig brain into Bai Qing's bowl. Z Ruoyan was not pleased. The saying goes, you are what you eat. Don't think about giving that pig brain to Bai Qing. Luo Feng Yuan quickly grabbed her hand to divert the topic. Then what should you eat to get back to normal? Zi Ruoyan clenched her fist in anger. Say that again? Luo Feng Yuan stood up, chest out. What do you want to do? The two stared each other down, grinding their molars audibly. Bai Qing simply picked up the pig brain with her chopsticks, put it in her mouth, and said, I think I've actually remembered something. Upon hearing this, all three turned to look at her. Even Xiao Tian stopped using his chopsticks. Bai Qing looked seriously at Luo Feng Yuan. You are important, Empress Luo. All hope rests on you. After a moment of stunned silence, Luo Feng Yuan eagerly asked, is there more? What else have you remembered? Bai Qing shook her head. I can't remember anymore. Let me check my dragon spirit. The next second, a majestic dragon spirit rose, and although the magical patterns on it were still there, cracks had indeed begun to appear. Seeing this, Xiao Tian excitedly slapped the table and stood up. It really works. How about we go and before he could finish, a menacing look from Zi Ruoyan silenced him. He could only complain inwardly. Why does Zi Ruoyan never agree with my ideas? Just then, the ever-curious Luo Feng Yuan suddenly spoke up. Brother Zhao's method is so good, why not let him try? Seeing Xiao Tian hang his head in disappointment, Luo Feng Yuan quickly shot Zi Ruoyan a glance. Tonight, brother Xiao, sleep. Zi Ruoyan extended her little hand and made an okay gesture, signaling that she understood. Immediately, the two began to argue. I don't agree. Are you looking for trouble on purpose? So what if I am? Xiao Tian was dumbfounded. What's gotten into these two now? The next second, they both swung their arms, and numerous jars of wine instantly appeared in the courtyard. Each picked up a jar and taunted, come on, who's afraid of who? Without further ado, they both tilted their heads back and started chugging. Xiao Tian watched in awe. My kidneys won't survive this. A sense of foreboding overcame him, prompting him to pick up a plate of stir-fried kidneys and start eating furiously. Bai Qing, who had been quietly eating her meal, was completely taken aback by the spectacle. Do they really love alcohol that much? Little did she know, what they were drinking was not alcohol, but loneliness. Unfortunately, the price was Xiao Tian's complete exhaustion. It wasn't long before the two empresses were drunk and collapsed. Xiao Tian looked at the two collapsed women with a resigned expression, thinking, I'll have to ask Zhong Yang Ming to make me a very nourishing meal tomorrow. Preparing to help the two empresses to their room, Bai Qing suddenly tapped Xiao Tian on the shoulder and asked, Need help? Xiao Tian quickly nodded in agreement. The two of them then proceeded to carry the two empresses to their room. As soon as they were placed on the bed, they naturally cuddled together. With a look of apology, Xiao Tian turned to Bai Qing, sorry for the trouble. Bai Qing analyzed seriously, it's not a bother. Holding Her Majesty Z is much easier. Her Majesty Luo, on the other hand, is too large 
reach to manage easily. It's cumbersome to hold her, although Her Majesty Z is not bad. Some things are troubling when there's a comparison. What they didn't notice was that at some point, Z Ruoyan had clenched her fist tightly. Luo Feng Yuan whispered, Don't move. She is telling the truth. Endure it for the sake of sleeping next to Brother Xiao. Upon hearing this, Z Ruoyan angrily tightened her grip on Luo Feng Yuan, who seemed rather excited. Press harder. Don't hold back on me. Bai Qing, noticing the slight movement, was a bit puzzled. Did Her Majesty Z and Luo just move? At this moment, Xiao Tian asked, Didn't I arrange a place for you to stay? Why haven't you left? Bai Qing lightly touched her lips with her index finger. I'm sorry for troubling you again, but could you knock me out like yesterday? I felt really relaxed when I woke up. Xiao Tian sighed in resignation, then took out a mattress and spread it on the ground, then sleep here. Bai Qing crawled into the blanket that Xiao Tian had provided. Thank you. Good night. With a chop of his hand, Xiao Tian knocked Bai Qing out again. As she fell back, her head hit the soft pillow and she fell into a deep sleep. Xiao Tian half crouched there, one hand supporting his knee, gazing at her in silence. The silver-haired dragon lady in front of me gives off the impression that she herself doesn't dare to sleep. Even now, in her unconscious state, her body is tense as if by instinct. What kind of environment must she have been in before? Just as Xiao Tian was lost in thought, he suddenly noticed a black tail appearing in front of him. Brother Xiao, it's time to go to sleep. Xiao Tian chuckled softly as he looked at the two women. Sometimes the world is just like this. When you can't resist, all you can do is resign yourself to enjoying what you have. It seems there's no other choice. So, Xiao Tian resumed his plumbing work. After a night of clearing out the drains, he woke up the next day feeling refreshed. At that moment, Bai Qing slowly opened her eyes and sat up. She looked behind her and noticed the bed was gone. Xiao Tian, holding a large cup of tea, slowly walked over. Are you awake? Yes, I slept well last night. Thank you for your help. Did you guys fight again last night? And what are you drinking? It smells wonderful. Xiao Tian handed over the cup of tea to her. Did you get injured in the fight last night? Are you drinking medicinal tea to heal? Xiao Tian conjured a new bed with a wave of his hand. This is six flavor Romania tea that I've prepared. It's remarkably effective for restoring vitality. Bai Qing gave the tea back to Xiao Tian. You do need to replenish your strength. I can sense you've been quite weak these past days. You must have suffered some internal injuries. Do you need my help to heal? Xiao Tian was curious. You can heal? I seem to recall something about dragon saliva being good for wounds in my memories. Though, I don't think I've ever done it before. You're a good person. I can try licking your wound. Xiao Tian was instantly alarmed, spraying out the tea he was drinking. Stop. Stop. I've asked Long Chiu Dao about this. It's nonsense. Besides, my injuries can't be healed by ordinary means. Seeing Xiao Tian's refusal, Bai Qing had no choice but to relent. Then let's try the electric shock therapy you mentioned yesterday. Xiao Tian was puzzled. Why are you in such a rush? You're safe now. Take some time to rest. Bai Qing explained. I want to recover my memories as quickly as possible so that I can compensate you for any losses I've caused. Xiao Tian was silent for a long time. Is that your only reason? Bai Qing has a serious expression on her face. I've already caused you a lot of trouble here. Moreover, I've promised you, so I must act quickly. Xiao Tian suddenly smiled happily. Very well, let's go. But besides electroshock, I've thought of an even better method. Really? That's great. Suddenly, Luo Feng Yuan's voice called out. Xiao brother, hurry up and go mooch a meal at Prime Minister Zhong's house. At this moment, Zhang Wushuang was standing on a flying boat, gazing at the holy demon realm. His face was filled with worry, but he could only pretend to be calm. However, his lieutenant, Zhang Zhuo, couldn't help but ask. Boss, it's been three days. Zhang Yisen and the others have been gone for so long, and there's still no news. Could something have happened? Hearing this, Zhang Wushuang calmly replied, Haven't you figured out why I sent the 10th team yet? Zhang Zhuo awkwardly scratched his head. Isn't it because Team 10 is the weakest? What else could it be? At these words, Zhang Wushuang turned his head away, somewhat disappointed. Can't you think more long-term like me? I've told you before, observe and notice the talents among these younger generations. I'm very confident in Zhang Yisen. He's calm and composed, and the most suitable for gathering information. I guess he deliberately turned off the communication array on the flying boat to avoid detection. Zhang Zhuo was somewhat surprised. How did you know, boss? I just checked, and it really is turned off. Hearing this, Zhang Wushuang felt even more confident in his judgment. That's why you should mature a bit. There are things you can learn from Team 10. Let's wait a few more days for them to reply. Maybe they'll come back and report in person. Zhang Zhuo laughed awkwardly. Boss, you really are the boss. Always thinking long term. I have so much to learn. But another 10 days have passed. Boss, there's still no contact from Zhang Yisen. Could something really have happened? Zhang Wushuang turned his head to look at him with disdain. What did I tell you before? Young people should be steady. He still has a blood crystal. What are you worried about? If something really happened, we would have seen an explosion by now. Zhang Zhuo scratched his bald head. But it's been so long, and still no news. Zhang Wushuang turned back to face him. You've been with me for a long time, Zhang Zhuo. From the siege of the sacred dragon to the breakout of the holy demon clan, I have to criticize you. Zhang Yisen has gone deep into enemy territory. Who knows what dangers he has faced? And you, as one of the older members of the clan, can't even give him a bit of trust. How many times have I told you to stay calm, steady, and relax? Zhang Zhuo felt helpless. 
helpless. But it's been 10 days now. He should have at least reported something, right? No news at all isn't good. Xiang Wushuang still dismissed his concerns. You need to learn to be calm. Don't make a fool of yourself. You should learn from Xianisen. Do you know what it means when there's no news for 10 days? Xiang Zhu looked surprised. What does it mean? Xiang Wushuang waved his hand dramatically and raised his voice. It means the dangers below are more complicated than we imagined. Xianisen must be cautiously laying a solid foundation for us. What we need to do now is to believe in him unreservedly and wait patiently for his good news. Trust me, Xianisen will definitely succeed. He might have already infiltrated the enemy base and is about to get the core secrets of the Holy Demon Emperor. Xiang Zhu looked at his boss's eyes full of expectation and couldn't help but think, Xianisen, you're about to hit it big. Time quietly passed, and a full month later, Xiang Wushuang began to doubt. Xiang Zhu cautiously asked, Boss, you don't think this kid has defected, do you? It's been so long. Hearing this, Xiang Wushuang erupted in anger. Absolutely impossible. Xiang Zhu couldn't help but remind him, but it's been a month. Boss, Xiang Wushuang felt a chill run down his spine. No, this can't be. Xiang Zhu patted Xiang Wushuang's shoulder. Boss, we're not a clan of fools. Even if Xianisen is steady, he's still part of our Bloodwing clan. Either he's gone, or he's become someone else's lackey. There's no other reason. Upon hearing this, Xiang Wushuang finally had to accept the reality. How he wished Xianisen was from a clan of fools. He had misplaced his trust. After pondering for a moment, Xiang Wushuang gave an order. You take the second and fifth teams and go down to check the situation. Be cautious. Do not act recklessly. Xiang Zhu clenched his fists. Understood. Boss, I'm not a greenhorn. We will complete the mission. You can count on us. Xiang Wushuang nodded slightly. Go on. I have faith in you. Moments later, seven or eight flying boats rushed straight into the holy demon realm. At this moment, on Green Flame Mountain, two flying boats from the Blood Rune clan were parked with a cloaking spell. Xiang Zhu was giving orders. The second team is stronger. Scout the surroundings first. Report immediately if anything unusual happens. Fifth team, set up a perimeter and scan the environment. Let's see what's going on. Finishing his instructions, he gestured, pulling both flying boats into his own spatial artifact. Once this was done, he once again instructed the teams behind him, be discreet, don't engage unless absolutely necessary. The crowd shouted in unison, understood. Shortly after, the captain of the fifth team, Zhan Zhizhi, began to set up the formation, placing a special spiritual tool capable of scanning the realm's environment and providing relevant intelligence. Spiritual energy detection array, activate. As he yelled, a complex formation appeared in the air. But Zhan Zhizhi suddenly froze, looking at the spiritual energy forming a curtain in front of him, speaking in a surprised tone. This data, why is it like this? Hearing this, Zhang Zhu immediately came over to inquire, what's going on? Shan Zhizhi pointed at the fluctuations displayed by the spiritual energy. The holy demon realm is a mid-level realm, but its spatial stability is almost on par with higher realms. Its levels of spiritual energy, laws of heaven and earth, are all gradually increasing. Zhang Zhu looked puzzled. Isn't that stating the obvious? Realms will ascend unless they are in a period of decline. Shan Zhizhi patiently explained, but that's based on long-term observations. The elevation of the holy demon realm is visible to the naked eye. There must be something anchoring this place, making its spiritual energy increase at a rate a day compared to a year in other mid-level realms. Hearing this, Zhang Zhu's eyes sparkled with understanding. It looks like this is the secret behind the formidable strength of Holy Demon Emperor Luo Taotian. Maybe Zhang Yisen has gone off the radar to take all the credit for himself. Zhang Zhizhi once again manipulated the spiritual tool array. After scanning for a moment, he pinpointed a direction. The spiritual energy fluctuations over there seem to date back to a very distant era. Maybe we'll find something worthwhile there. Zhang Zhu patted him on the shoulder. Good job, young man. Let's head in that direction. Find this ancient treasure and uncover the secrets of Holy Demon Emperor. Little did they know, they were actually heading towards the palace of Prince Xiao Tian. Meanwhile, Xiao Tian, who was currently practicing standing meditation with Zhong Yangming and others, suddenly sneezed violently, rubbing his nose with a puzzled expression. He wondered, who's thinking about me out of the blue? Never mind, it's not important. The current main task is to boost the spiritual power in the Holy Demon realm. Puppy, how are things going? Puppy, Puppy's voice immediately responded, Master, rest assured. After you've been exercising, the realm has improved even more dramatically. According to the data, based on the current rate of progress, the livestock and crops on Green Flame Mountain will taste about 70% better next time. The taste will be more appealing. Xiao Tian immediately smiled. Well done. The improvement in the food's taste, coupled with Zhong Yangming's increasingly better culinary skills, this will be heavenly. Just then, Xiao Tian noticed Bai Qing at the courtyard entrance. Why are you back? Shouldn't you be with Luo Feng Yuan today? Bai Qing scratched her head awkwardly. Well, you see, she went to see the two empresses today. Both of them offered money for her to join them in beating themselves up. Luo Feng Yuan was confident, saying, All of you, come on, it's more fun for me to fight. Zi Ruoyan also looked assured. Both of you attack, it's good practice for me, considering I've hit a bottleneck in recovering my memory and still owe money to Prince Xiao. I agreed. Later on, Empress Luo was taken away by Empress Xi for official duties, so 
I came back early. Saying this, she looked up and inquired, Are you conditioning your body again? Xiao Tian, standing on a pillar, responded, Sort of. Would you like to try? Bai Qing excitedly nodded and pushed off the ground. In an instant, she flew up and landed steadily on a pillar. Xiao Tian couldn't help but exclaim, Wow, you're quite talented. Bai Qing then smiled and handed over a bag of money she was holding. Here, this is for you, for today. Xiao Tian stared intently at the spirit stone in her hand. I appreciate young people like you who are honest and pay their debts on time. He gave her a thumbs up as he spoke. At this, Zhong Ling who was nearby couldn't help but ask, Why is another woman giving money to Prince? And using the money she earned from the two empresses, no less. Lu Yan, not at all surprised, calmly sipped his tea and said, The name might be wrong, but the title is spot on. The Prince is indeed the supreme benevolent sugar baby deity. At this moment, in the imperial study of the palace, Luo Feng Yuan Yan widely bored out of her mind as she lay on the desk in front of her, surrounded by countless petitions. She aimlessly slapped her tail against the floor. Zi Ruoyan, on the other hand, was diligently reviewing documents. Luo Feng Yuan turned her head and asked, I don't get it. How can you be so busy all the time and still manage to improve your strength so quickly? You've broken through to the 14th level in such a short time. That's really fast. Seeing that Zi Ruoyan remained silent, Luo Feng Yuan muttered to herself, Is this the incredible power of the human empress bloodline? Just be a good empress. Govern the subjects well, and naturally you'll increase your strength. After a while, Zi Ruoyan finally finished reviewing the petitions and explained, Regular cultivation is indispensable. Moreover, I'm just making more rational use of the time you're wasting by complaining. She tapped Luo Feng Yuan's head with a stack of papers as she spoke. Not just me, even Bai Qing, despite her amnesia, finds time to cultivate diligently. Luo Feng Yuan pouted, What's the point then? However, if Brother Xiao continues to scold and reprimand me harshly, I'll definitely be motivated to cultivate. Dreamily imagining this, Luo Feng Yuan looked as if she were lost in her own world. Zi Ruoyan was speechless, your bad habits really leave me at a loss for words. Plus, Lord Xiao has been getting gentler recently, it's going to be hard to provoke him. Luo Feng Yuan, looking quite regretful, sprawled across the desk. True, but remember, Brother Xiao was really angry when he thought I was going to steal a pig. Suddenly, she slapped the table, stood up and exclaimed, I've got it, startling Zi Ruoyan so much that her writing went crooked. She looked at Luo Feng Yuan, what are you planning now? Luo Feng Yuan smiled wistfully, as if planning her next move, nothing much. I just thought of a way to provoke Brother Xiao. I'll be back shortly. Zi Ruoyan shouted after her retreating figure. Be careful. Don't do anything reckless. Luo Feng Yuan quickly departed. Don't worry. I'm just going to steal a pig. Zi Ruoyan was puzzled. Steal a pig? What kind of plan is that? After leaving the palace, Luo Feng Yuan headed straight for the Green Flame Mountain Livestock Farm, which was pretty much Xiao Tian's private property and not for sale to the public. The Green Flame pigs were fat and healthy, spending their days eating, drinking, and sunbathing. Luo Feng Yuan arrived above the farm and targeted a specific pig, thinking, if I steal Brother Zhao's most treasured 5 at grade number 998 pig, he'll definitely be furious. He he he. Soon, many people witnessed the sight of Luo Feng Yuan parading through the streets, pulling along Xiao Tian's favorite pig, with a bright smile on her face. She thought to herself, I wonder how Brother Xiao will punish me. He'll probably hit me really hard on the head. He he he. Just then, a peculiar wave of spiritual power, accompanied by the aura of burning flames, came roaring towards her from not too far away. Luo Feng Yuan was stunned, already, the pig was equally astonished, thinking, looks like I'm going to be roasted. With a loud crash, Luo Feng Yuan was knocked back, the green flame pig sent flying as well. Demonic energy surged within her, and her black tight-fitting leather clothes were instantly covered by black armor. A huge black scythe appeared in her hand. Luo Feng Yuan's aura erupted, and purple demonic flames rose up. She looked at the bald man in armor opposite her and demanded, Who are you? What are you doing here? The man was none other than Zhang Zhuo, the second team captain of the Blood Rune clan. Clenching his fist, his blood runes flamed up like wildfire. With a mighty punch aimed at Luo Feng Yuan, he yelled, Never mind who I am, eat my fist first. With a clang, the man's fist collided with Luo Feng Yuan's black scythe. Sparks flew in an instant, and the force from the collision rapidly separated them. Luo Feng Yuan was sent flying quite a distance before she finally stopped. As she landed, something suddenly occurred to her, and she shouted, Damn it, where's my pig? If it's gone, Xiao Tian will be heartbroken. Luo Feng Yuan looked around anxiously. The green flame pig was lying not far behind her, looking serene and motionless. Just then, footsteps sounded. Luo Feng Yuan looked up and realized she was surrounded by a dozen bald men. Zhang Zhuo, who was leading them, finally spoke. Woman of the demon clan, judging by the aura emanating from you, are you the current demon empress of the holy demon domain? Zhang Zhuo's face was serious. What is your relationship with holy demon emperor Luo Taoyan? As he spoke, he suddenly paused, sensing a terrifying killing intent. Luo Feng Yuan's demonic flames were dancing violently as if boiling. She glared at the men before her, her eyes filled with extreme rage. You filthy male vermin, that's my man's favorite ingredient. You disgusting 
lowlifes. Die. With that, Luo Fum Yuan's aura erupted completely and she charged at the Blood Rune clan members, swinging her scythe. On the other hand, Zi Ruoyan was initially focused on handling administrative affairs. As her pen moved, the fate of the entire dynasty seemed to flow into her like golden light. Suddenly, her hand, which was holding the pen, paused. She clearly felt a strong fluctuation of spiritual energy coming from the green flame mountain outside the palace. Making such a commotion over stealing a pig? Suddenly, it seemed like she thought of something. Z Royan abruptly stood up, and her white armor with golden patterns instantly covered her entire body. She burst into golden light and flew out of her study, heading straight for Green Flame Mountain. It's not possible for Luo Feng Yuan to cause such a ruckus just by stealing a pig. Something must have happened. Meanwhile, Luo Feng Yuan, amidst the Blood Rune clan members, swung her scythe like a spinning windmill. The collision forced the numerous bald men of the Blood Rune clan to repeatedly retreat. Suddenly, Luo Feng Yuan tightly gripped her scythe and shouted, Demonic flames, sky high. In an instant, an even more intense burst of purple demonic flames erupted. As she swung her arm, the burning purple flames seemed like rolling tidal waves. The many Blood Rune clan members who were maintaining their offensive stance quickly crossed their arms in front of them. In that moment, a murderous intent emerged. Those with weaker powers could not withstand it. Their armor was torn apart, and they screamed in agony. Seeing the situation go awry, Zhang Zhua quickly ordered a retreat. His veins bulged, and flames of bloody red energy burned all over him, forming a Blood Rune flame figure. As Zhang Zhua shouted angrily, the ignited spiritual energy between heaven and earth instantly transformed into a hundred meter tall fire giant. The giant moved in sync with Zhang Zhua, tightly clenching its fist and aiming it directly at Luo Feng Yuan. Luo Feng Yuan smirked, revealing a look of disdain. In the next second, she vanished before the giant's fist, only to reappear above its head. Her demonic energy exploded, and purple flames continually burned, forming a giant fiery scythe. Then, Luo Feng Yuan swung the massive scythe with increasing force and speed. Suddenly, a booming sound erupted as they collided. The ground trembled slightly, and a large, deep pit formed, surrounded by burning flames. Zhang Zhuo was sent flying by the recoil and landed on the ground. Zhang Zhizhi quickly stepped forward to steady him. Zhang Zhuo's face was full of shock. This member of the Holy Demon Clan was much stronger than what he had known from the intelligence. She was at least on par with him, a 16th level fighter. Suddenly, the surrounding air seemed to cool. Zhang Zhizhi looked around in confusion. Vice Commander, why does it feel colder? At that moment, a pair of feet gently landed on the ground. The newcomer was surrounded by an intense chill, with even ice crystals falling from her body. It was Zi Ruoyan. She cradled Luo Feng Yuan in a princess hold and said with a smirk, Your plan sure made a lot of noise, didn't it? Luo Feng Yuan clenched her fists and accused, These pests from who knows where, these filthy things, killed the number 998 that Xiao brother had prepared for us to enjoy for the new year. Number 998? Zi Ruoyan was slightly taken aback. So these people are the Blood Rune clan that Lord Xiao and Prime Minister Zhong mentioned? The bald members of the Blood Rune clan all looked solemnly at the two women before them. Zi Ruoyan gave a faint smile. I was planning to track you down, but here you are, right on my doorstep. How convenient. Luo Feng Yuan stepped down from Zi Ruoyan's embrace and picked up her black scythe again. Be careful. They are body cultivators capable of regular cultivation. They're tough to deal with. Zi Ruoyan, however, was nonchalant. A golden power burst from her as she held a giant golden sword and said with a light smile, just beat them half to death and capture them. Zhang Zhuo looked at them with a face full of mockery. Interesting. A holy demon clan woman, and you bring along a 14th level helper, and she's human? Before Zhang Zhuo could finish, the sky and earth shook. Above the entire Great Flame Dynasty, the national fate appeared like a golden river spanning thousands of miles, turning into imperial dragon energy and pouring into Zi Ruoyan. Zhang Zhizhi blurted out, what the hell, is this the human emperor? Even Zhang Zhuo was stunned. Zi Ruoyan had suddenly reached the 16th level. At the same time, the imperial will within Luo Feng Yuan also burst forth. She instantly recovered from her depleted state, appearing both bewitching and powerful. Above their heads hovered a golden dragon with extreme cold and a black dragon entwined with purple flames. Astonishingly, the two dragons responded to each other and merged. A terrifying imperial pressure instantly shook the entire land. Zhang Zhuo looked at this scene, his bald head instantly soaked in cold sweat. What is going on? Weren't they supposed to be like water and fire, incompatible? How are these two putting on a show of water and fire merging right here? Where's the referee? They're cheating. Luo Feng Yuan didn't pay attention to his inner shock and charged at him, dragging her black scythe. A barrage of purple holy demon flames snapped Zhang Zhuo back to reality. Zhang Zhuo quickly activated the power of the blood rune, his body swelling rapidly, his fists gathering scorching flames. But inwardly he was screaming, damn, I'm running out of stamina. I need to end this quickly. Luo Feng Yuan pressed forward, swinging down her scythe once more, and taunted, your power seems to be weakening. Zhang Zhuo's face tightened as he continuously raised his arms to block her attacks, gritting his teeth in persistence. I don't believe that before my power completely. 
completely wanes. I won't find a way to break her guard. Damn this holy demon flame. But Luo Feng Yuan became more and more frenzied as she fought, her swinging scythe getting faster and her expression increasingly excited. Keep fighting, you worthless insect. Are you only good at retreating? Zhang Zhuo was increasingly struggling to cope and finally issued orders to the surrounding Blood Rune clan members. Surround her, let's wear her down, drain her demonic energy and stamina. The crowd quickly responded. Only then did Zhang Zhuo taunt Luo Feng Yuan. You think just because you're getting more excited, I can't do anything about you. Let's see whose demonic energy and stamina run out first. With that, Zhang Zhuo seized the opportunity to retreat sharply. At the same time, the other Blood Rune clan members all closed in. Luo Feng Yuan made a strike, but Zhang Zhuo disappeared, hiding behind other Blood Rune clan members. He coldly looked at Luo Feng Yuan in the middle of the crowd and shouted, All of you, attack! In an instant, numerous bald Blood Rune clan members charged at Luo Feng Yuan, determined to cut her down. However, at this moment, Zi Ruoyan, who had been watching the battle, suddenly called out to Luo Feng Yuan and blew out a cold breath. Luo Feng Yuan looked at the numerous Blood Rune clan warriors turned into ice sculptures and immediately got the message. The other peripheral warriors, sensing the sudden drop in temperature, were puzzled and terrified. What's going on? Why did it suddenly get so cold? Luo Feng Yuan didn't give them time to react. She extended her long legs in a spinning windmill kick, incapacitating several people immediately. Zhang Zhuo, seeing his forces nearly annihilated, roared instinctively, but Zi Ruoyan had already lifted her sword above his head. You should worry about yourself. Zhang Zhuo twisted his head in horror, but it was too late. He was severely wounded almost instantly, internally screaming impossible as his armor's protective barrier was shattered in an instant. At this point, Zhang Zhuo was flung into a boulder, which shattered upon impact. Zi Ruoyan then slowly landed in front of him. Struggling to sit up, Zhang Zhuo's body trembled from exhaustion, but his eyes were filled with concern for his subordinates. Without him to hold the line, those with lower cultivation levels stood no chance against their opponents. Luo Feng Yuan was excitedly massacring the enemy. Unfortunately, their numerical advantage eventually led to them surrounding her again. Zi Ruoyan quickly planned their tactics. Luo Feng Yuan, use flanking attacks. Focus on attrition. Leave the other team members to me. A team member took the opportunity to help Zhang Zhuo, Vice Commander. She has the legitimate Imperial bloodline of the human race. This should be her territory. We can't win. Only then did Zhang Zhuo realize. So she has the legitimate Imperial human bloodline? We must retreat. As the order was issued, the many Blood Rune clan members didn't hesitate. They all began to flee with all their might. Luo Feng Yuan, who had been immersed in the excitement of combat, immediately changed her expression when she saw them run. Don't go. Stay and play. Saying this, Luo Feng Yuan spread her wings, ready to chase after the two warships above her. Zi Ruoyan grabbed her tail. Don't chase them, their thing is too fast. We won't catch up. Luo Feng Yuan had no choice but to stop. She looked at Zi Ruoyan pitifully. What should we do next? Zi Ruoyan pondered briefly. Let's go back for now and see what the Dragon Mound Elder has to say. After Bai Qing arrives, this Blood Rune clan appears. It must be related to her. Alright, let's hurry back to Great Flame Imperial City to find her. Luo Feng Yuan agreed. Both transformed into two streets of light, one gold and one purple, and disappeared on the spot. However, after they left, the two warships that had flown away slowly reappeared right where they were. It's true, the most dangerous place is the safest place, came the comment. That day, when he and his daughter Xiao Yuer returned to the palace, Xiao Yuer noticed the communication jade token on the table vibrating and emitting faint light. Daddy, it seems like you have a message on your communication jade, she quickly told Xiao Tian. Puzzled, Xiao Tian picked up the jade token and read the message from the mayor of Green Flame Town. Prince, pig number 998 is missing. I have failed you. Furious, Xiao Tian dashed out of the courtyard and yelled at Zhong Yangming and a few others who were about to leave. Both of you, come with me right now. Zhong Yangming and Wang Chiodao turned their heads in surprise, but before they could ask why, Xiao Tian grabbed their clothes and flew into the sky. Before leaving, Xiao Tian didn't forget to tell Bai Qing, stay here and hold down the fort. Don't run around. Guard my treasure. I'll deduct 10,000 spirit stones from your debt. Bai Qing clenched her small fists and nodded seriously. Don't don't worry, I will complete the task. Seeing this, Xiao Tian burst into full speed, soaring into the sky. He felt he was losing control of his emotions. These people dare to steal my pig today. Tomorrow they'll dare to steal my people. Are my gentle and fragile empress wives just free for the taking? Suddenly, a voice entered his ears. It seems that crazy woman from the Holy Demon Clan doesn't know much about our Blood Rune Clan and Luo Taoyan's affairs. Ha! Huh? Xiao Tian was immediately filled with a nameless rage. It's this damned Blood Rune Clan again. I have to wipe you all out to do justice to pig no 
number 998. On the other side, Zhang Zhuo looked at the chaotic battlefield and the two empresses who had already left. Good thing I had the real warship within a formation and used another formation to project an image of the warship leaving. Zhang Zhizhi walked over. Vice Commander, the formation is all set up. Zhang Zhuo nodded. Then let's begin. Immediately, a humming noise spread out, and a large formation enveloped the area, hiding the traces of the Blood Rune clan members. Zhang Zhuo then looked at his subordinate, Zhang Zhizhi. Based on the remnants of the battle, can you estimate how strong those two empresses are? When we clashed, I found that the Holy Demon Empress had an imperial aura stronger than even that of Luo Tao Tian, the Holy Demon Emperor. Zhang Zhizhi looked excited. Not only that, we've also discovered the orthodox imperial bloodline of the human race. If our calculations are correct, we'll get huge merit for this. Zhang Zhuo scratched his bald head. Unfortunately, we haven't found any trace of the Dragon Empress. I wonder if we've poked a hornet's nest. That's already three empresses. Very interesting. Saying this, he walked forward to look at the clansmen who had died in the battle. Seeing his mood a bit low, Zhang Zhizhi quickly comforted, Vice Commander, we don't need to be overly sad. The Blood Rune clan will remember their glory. And after this battle, why don't we all take a good rest? This pig smells delicious. Let's eat and drink well to regain our strength. Hearing this, Zhang Zhuo looked at the pig in the pit. An alluring smell of roasted meat wafted into his nose, making him swallow involuntarily. You're right, let's feast on it. After pulling the pig out of the pit, Zhang Zhuo sprinkled some cumin on it. Just as he was about to start carving it with knife and fork, a subordinate suddenly shouted, Vice Commander, that Empress from the Holy Demon Clan suppresses our Blood Rune Clan's combat power by about 50%. The restraint strength is even up to three times. Moreover, the Human Empress enhances the capabilities of the Holy Demon Clan's Empress. Not only do their powers perfectly match and fuse, they also boost each other. The estimated boost is up to 200%. Most surprisingly, if we add the Dragon Empress's power data into it, the result would be a 300% increase. Zhang Zhuo instantly felt his scalp tingle, even dropping the knife he was holding. If they get to the battlefield, our whole Blood Rune clan will likely be annihilated. He urgently told everyone, we must find a way to capture them. Otherwise, the Blood Rune clan is in danger. Squad leader Zhang Zhizhi pondered, we can't beat them head on, and we've already been exposed. They will definitely increase their defenses. A sneak attack is also out of the question. Vice Commander, why don't we go back and report to Commander? No way! Zhang Zhuo interrupted him immediately. The boss told us to be cautious and prudent when we left. And now, not even a day has passed, and we've messed up this badly. Do you want to be scolded mercilessly? Suddenly, Zhang Zhuo caught sight of the roasted pig number 998 beside him. He recalled that Luo Feng Yuan had personally come to catch the pig, calling out four brothers Xiao at the time. An idea popped into his head. The weak point is in the man mentioned by that crazy demon clan woman. This holy demon clan's empress even flew here carrying a pig just for her man, and got so angry when the pig died. Clearly, she dotes on him. We just need to find and capture this pretty boy. Manipulating an inept empress like her, who cares more for beauty than her empire, will be easy. Zhang Zhuo said this with a face full of excitement. Zhang Zhizhi enthusiastically gave him a thumbs up. You're a genius, commander. You found a way out in this chaotic situation. Smiling smugly, Zhang Zhuo corrected him. Be cautious, it's vice commander. You've also been working hard to monitor the fluctuations in spiritual energy and gathering this intelligence. As he spoke, Zhang Zhuo took the kidney from pig number 998 and handed it directly to Zhang Zhizhi. Grilled kidney, the best part. Here you go. Zhang Zhizhi flattered again. You're too modest, commander. Whether main or vice, you're still the commander. The two exchanged knowing smiles, and Zhang Zhuo then shouted to everyone, fellow clan members, once you've eaten and drunk your fill, prepare to work. This time, I, Zhang Zhuo, promise to lead you to great achievements. Then we can return and enjoy the good life. No more risking our lives. Just as the crowd began to cheer, the concealment formation they'd set up was suddenly ripped apart like a piece of cloth. The person who broke it was none other than Xiao Tian, who had hurriedly arrived with Zhong Yang Ming and Wang Chiodao. Xiao Tian was absolutely devastated, as if a bolt from the blue had struck him. My 998 is gone. Zhang Zhizhi looked around. What happened? How was the formation torn apart? Zhang Zhuo nervously asked. Could there have been a mistake when you set up the formation? It's impossible. To avoid unexpected situations, I intentionally increased the formation strength this time, using more than twice the amount of spirit stones. Zhang Zhizhi replied. Hearing this, Zhang Zhuo clenched his teeth with worry. Everyone, pay attention. Whoever is coming doesn't have good intentions, and they're probably not weak either. Meanwhile, in the sky, Xiao Tian sighed deeply, pointing at the Blood Rune clan and questioning the two. Do you still want to say that my concerns were unwarranted? The Blood Rune clan is clearly targeting me. They stole my pig as soon as they showed up, intentionally left traces, and even had the mayor of Green Flame Town notify me personally. It's all to lure me here. Zhong Yang Ming was still somewhat skeptical. Could there be a misunderstanding? After all, you have no grievances with the Blood Rune clan. Why would they target you? Xiao Tian shook his head. I don't know. There's definitely an unknown truth hidden here. But the evidence that they are targeting me is the number 998 pig. Why do you say
say that, Prince. Xiao Tian wiped the saliva from the corner of his mouth. The green flame pig was cooked in the most perfect, most authentic way. Also my favorite cooking method, charcoal grilled whole pig. Not only do they know which pig is my favorite, but they also know my taste preferences. It shows how terrifying their intelligence system is. I have to say, it smells really good. It even seems like they used seasonings I've never heard of. No, this is not the time to eat. Xiao Tian forcefully shook his head as if to shake the tempting aroma out of his mind. Damn it, they knew I was coming and purposely used food to distract me. Tell me, if they weren't targeting me, why would they gather all this information? Why? All I want to do is good deeds every day and be a kind-hearted, carefree prince. Why is it that people are always trying to harm me? Xiao Tian looked distressed. Zhong Yangming and Wang Chiodao were deeply moved. This Blood Rune clan is too terrifying. Their intentions are extremely malicious. Both wore angry expressions. It seems we can't let them go. Upon seeing the three people floating in the sky garden, the first thing the Blood Rune clan noticed was Wang Chiodao in the middle. See that old man? Zhang Zhu pointed out to his followers. He looks like he's from the Sacred Dragon Clan. Zhang Zhixi looked in the direction and confirmed. Seems like it is indeed the Sacred Dragon Clan. But something feels odd. He doesn't seem to have a physical body, just a form made of spiritual energy. Zhang Zhu felt a weight on his mind. Are you sure? Zhang Zhixi's bald head dripped a bead of sweat. Yes, I'm sure. That's why the Sacred Dragon Clan is appearing in the Holy Demon Realm. It's probably a dragon spirit left over from a past era. Because the soul is powerful, it can form such a dragon spirit body. But a pure dragon spirit body isn't very powerful. It can be dealt with. As he spoke, Zhang Zhixi took out a formation disc. I'll adjust the formation to seal it off, so the fight won't alert the departing empress. It will also enhance our fighting power. However, the spirit stones will be consumed several times faster. We need to make it quick. With that, Zhang Zhixi pressed his hand onto the formation disc. In an instant, the previously torn formation closed up, covering the three of them. Xiao Tian looked at them knowingly. See, even the formation is prepped in advance. The moment they see us, they're ready to act. They practically have deal with Xiao Tian written on their foreheads. Zhong Yangming and Wang Chiodao exchanged glances. It seems they really are targeting the prince. Let's do this. Take them down. But in the next second, Xiao Tian said something that stunned them. You guys, use the ultimate move, the combined attack technique we've been practicing these days. Both felt stiff all over and quickly gestured to Xiao Tian. Prince, the move and the slogan need some discussion. Maybe we should slow down? No way. Xiao Tian firmly rejected the idea. There's no time to discuss. We must shout it out loud and clear to let those villains know that justice is right here, right now. Saying this, he spread his arms and yelled at the bald men below. Charge. Reluctantly, Zhong Yangming clenched his teeth. We have to make them regret this later. Long Chiodao also looked unwilling. Don't worry, I'll boost you as much as I can. With that, Zhong Yangming began to gather his power, still very upset inside. This is all the fault of these Blood Rune Clan beasts. Otherwise, we wouldn't need to fight, and the prince wouldn't ask us to use the combined attack technique. Thankfully, not many outsiders were around. Thinking this, Zhong Yang Ming clashed his fists together, and a burst of energy exploded from him. The next second, his clothes tore to shreds. He yelled out, Combined secret technique, I will form the body. Long Chiodao transformed into his true form and shouted, Combined secret technique, I will form the armor. Then Long Chiodao dove into Zhong Yang Ming's body. Instantly, light shone brightly, and an armored giant appeared, even striking a Bruce Lee classic pose. The bald men from the Blood Rune clan were stunned. Only Xiao Tian was ecstatic. This is awesome. With these two as a combo, the title of Supreme Benevolent sugar baby deity suddenly sounds so much better. Everything is relative, isn't it? Who cares about losing face? That's their problem, not mine, right? Although Zhong Yangming himself felt embarrassed, his pride wouldn't let him be the butt of jokes. He immediately unleashed his aura, preparing to attack. The expressions on the faces of the Blood Rune clan baldies changed instantly. Deputy Commander Zhang Zhu quickly ordered them to disperse. As Zhong Yangming's strike came down with a roar, they dodged it. Seeing this, Zhang Zhu waved his hand, attack. Zhong Yangming immediately turned to look at him. So you're the ringleader. Long Chiodao, merged with Zhong Yangming, felt a surge of anger as well, shouting, smash him. Faced with a fist clenching, teeth gritting Zhong Yangming, Zhang Zhu's blood runes shone brightly as a giant made of flames began to rise. However, before the fiery giant could fully form, Zhong Yangming's foot already landed a brutal kick on its face. Accompanied by a massive boom, the fiery giant exploded, and Zhang Zhu, unable to dodge, took the kick squarely. He was sent flying into the ground like a cannonball. Two minutes later, just as Zhang Zhu was crawling out of the pit, his face changed dramatically. He exclaimed, damn it, because what he saw was Zhong Yangming lifting both legs and then slamming down with his butt, sending Zhang Zhu back into the hole. Seeing this, other bald members of the Blood Rune clan recklessly unleashed their energy attacks on Zhong Yangming. However, Zhong Yangming casually wiped them away, ending their lives. A bunch of pig-stealing thieves, he snarled disdainfully. I, as the Prime Minister, am busy serving the people. Do you really think you can make a mockery of me? With that, he raised his foot and stomped hard on Zhang Zhu. Zhang Zhu was left tearless, thinking
thinking, what bad karma did I accumulate to run into such a freak? Meanwhile, as Zhong Yangming continued to step on people, Xiao Tian was tearfully looking at pig number 998. You really died in such a miserable way. 998. I'm sorry I couldn't protect you or let you grace the dinner table in your most perfect form. But rest assured, these people will get their comeuppance. As he spoke, Xiao Tian ripped off a pig's hoof and took a huge bite, savoring the taste. He felt as though pig number 998 was speaking to him, saying, My deliciousness is unparalleled and belongs only to you. Xiao Tian silently looked at the pig's hoof. Don't worry, I will fully enjoy your body. Rest in peace, my 998. Just as Zhong Yangming prepared to stomp again, Zhang Zhu suddenly leapt out of the hole, pulling out the Blood Rune Clan's ultimate weapon, a blood crystal. His aura changed instantly. We are noble and never surrendering warriors of the Blood Rune Clan. Our fate is to die honorably in battle, not to be humiliated by your lowly human race, backed by the sacred dragon clan's dragon spirit. Other bald warriors landed behind Zhang Zhuo, whose blood crystal was spinning in his hand, emitting an incredibly menacing aura. Yes, we, the Blood Rune Clan, are warriors who should die on the battlefield, not get sat on the death. Zhang Zhuo's face turned serious. I never expected to encounter such a strong opponent in the holy demon domain. No wonder Zhang Isen has been hiding and not revealing himself. With that, Zhang Zhuo suddenly grinned. Now let the trump card of our Blood Rune Clan shine brightly in this middle-level domain world. Zhang Zhuo looked towards the direction of the Blood Rune Clan's main force in the void. Boss, you better be careful. Even if you try to stop it now, it's already too late. However, Zhong Yangming stood there with his arms crossed, quietly watching Zhang Zhuo, showing no intention of taking any action, and even displaying a slight disdain. Zhang Zhuo suddenly felt uneasy, thinking, could it be that they're not afraid of dying? Just then, a warrior shouted, look, what is that human doing? Before Zhang Zhuo could react, the blood crystal in his hand was snatched away. Xiao Tian weighed the blood crystal in his hand. So you have one of these interesting things too. I've been missing it ever since I had one last time. Zhang Zhuo was extremely anxious and was about to say something when Xiao Tian took a big bite, a look of bliss covering his face. This is amazing. Do you guys have more? As he spoke, Xiao Tian began to juggle the blood crystal in the air. Zhang Zhuo felt a chill down his spine. I was going to detonate this blood crystal like a true Blood Rune Clan warrior, dying with honor and courage in a blaze of glory. How can this worthless human suppress the blood crystal and even take a bite? Do you know how damaging that is to our Blood Rune Clan? With a face full of resentment, Zhang Zhuo thought the blood crystal should be close to exploding by now, right? He stared intently at Xiao Tian, who didn't seem to care and just threw the remaining blood crystal into his mouth, swallowing it whole. The next second, a rumbling sound came from his stomach. Xiao Tian let out a satisfied belch. Ah, that familiar feeling. So good. Zhang Zhixi felt like he had aged backwards out of sheer terror. He actually ate an entire blood crystal and it exploded in his stomach. And he's fine? And even feels great? Is this guy even human? Then he thought, wait, did Xiao Tian say he ate another blood crystal before? Upon this realization, Zhang Zhixi asked, did Johnny Sin die at your hands? Xiao Tian responded calmly, Johnny Sin, are you talking about that Blood Rune Clan guy? Don't falsely accuse me. I didn't kill him. He died due to his own moral corruption, refusing to be reformed and re-educated, and his soul collapsed. All the other Blood Rune Clan members committed suicide. Don't wrong a good person. The Blood Rune Clan warriors were all furious. This guy isn't human. He's a demon. What horrendous torture must our mentally resilient Blood Rune Clan warriors have suffered before dying to have their souls collapse? Afterwards, Xiao Tian and his group tied up all the members of the Blood Rune Clan. Long Chiodao looked displeased. Master Xiao is too kind to you all, merely crippling your cultivation. If it were up to me, I'd turn you all to ashes, making me lose so much face. You bunch of jerks. Zhang Zhuo, the deputy commander of the Blood Rune Clan, signaled to his people with his eyes. We, the warriors of the Blood Rune Clan, never submit. Everyone understood, looking at Xiao Tian with hatred. Meanwhile, Xiao Tian casually started roasting a pig. As the aroma intensified, the stomachs of the battle-weary Blood Rune Clan warriors began to rumble uncontrollably. Chomping down on the meat, Xiao Tian remarked, This meat is so delicious, especially with this seasoning on the crispy, golden brown skin. He even fanned the aroma toward the Blood Rune Clan, making their mouths water. Zhang Zhuo clenched his brows, thinking, a soldier can be killed, but not humiliated. It's just roasted pig. However, his body betrayed him, as his stomach growled louder, and everyone seemed to be on the verge of losing their sanity. Xiao Tian suddenly moved closer with a bone in hand, feeling tempted, want to have a lick, to taste it. Zhang Zhuo, who had been somewhat disoriented, snapped back to attention, grinding his teeth in anger and wishing he could bite Xiao Tian to death. He suddenly couldn't help but shout, kill me, if you have the guts, kill me now. Xiao Tian just laughed and turned to the others saying, see, he's losing it. He can't even withstand this minor temptation. No wonder he'd resort to stealing a pig. Shaking his head, he continued, it seems like the moral integrity and educational upbringing of the Blood Rune Clan is really lacking. You call yourselves noble warriors? More like hooligans on a battlefield. I can't stand to watch this anymore. They must make amends for their mistakes. Take them to Green Flame Mountain. Zhong Yangming 
and Long Chiodao exchanged glances, both sighing, you guys could have provoked anyone else, but you had to mess with Master Xiao, now you'll know what it's like to wish for death. Soon, they arrived at the pig farm in Green Flame Town. Xiao Tian pointed at pig number 997, kneel and apologize. Zhang Zhuo was stunned, and the others were equally flabbergasted. You want us, the esteemed warriors of the Bloodroom clan, to kneel and apologize to a pig? Xiao Tian swiftly slapped Zhang Zhuo, spinning him around in place. With a thud, Zhang Zhuo reluctantly knelt before pig number 997. In an indignant tone, Xiao Tian informed him, number 997 is a mother. Originally, I had planned for number 998 to witness the birth of its children and proceed to the dinner table for the New Year's reunion with a heart full of happiness. But your greedy and selfish actions ruined a happy family. This is an atrocious sin. Apologize whether you want to or not. Zhang Zhuo was on the verge of tears. It's so unfair. I didn't steal the pig. This is the biggest humiliation of my life. This man, he's not human. Watching Zhang Zhuo finally shed tears, Xiao Tian smiled. Are those tears of regret? It seems you're not beyond redemption. After all this time, I've finally encountered someone who is genuinely remorseful. Just then, the mayor of Green Flame Town came running and shouting. He said to Xiao Tian, Prince, it seems like the mood of the livestock is a bit off. Seizing the opportunity, Xiao Tian asked the mayor, you've come just in time. Take a look. Are these the people who stole the pig? The mayor instantly understood, pointing at the group angrily. Yes, it's these guys. Kneeling on the side, Zhang Zhu became unhappy. You're talking nonsense. We didn't do it. It was clearly a crazy woman from the Holy Demon Clan who stole it. Zhong Yang Ming and Wang Chiodao understood immediately. Who else could it be but Luo Feng Yuan from the Holy Demon Clan? She's the kind of person who would do such a thing. Xiao Tian ignored them, stepping forward to kick Zhang Zhu twice. Don't speak nonsense. She's my. Suddenly he stopped, changing his tone. She's a good emperor who protects ordinary people like me. How could she possibly steal my pig? I just praised you, and you immediately forget yourself and start slandering good people. Ideological reform is urgently needed. Xiao Tian then looked at Long Chiodao, placed the mark of servitude on them and give control authority to the mayor. After Long Chiodao complied, Xiao Tian instructed the mayor, from now on, these blood rune clan criminals are yours to instruct. Any hard labor like shoveling manure or massaging the pigs, cows, and sheep of green flame can be given to them. After all, they have big ambitions and strong strong bodies. The mayor couldn't contain his smile. Prince, you're truly amazing. I just mentioned we were short-handed a few days ago, and you've resolved it all at once. The bald heads were all numb with disbelief. Our destiny as Blood Rune Clan warriors is on the battlefield, to lead brilliant lives through blood and fire, not to wallow in feces. Suddenly, the mayor remembered his original purpose. Prince, what I was trying to say was about the livestock's mood issues. Xiao Tian patted him on the shoulder, cutting him off. Don't worry, I have a plan. He then turned to Long Chiodao with a serious face. Put this bald guy into that yo-yo over there. Long Chiodao was startled. Is this really okay? He's a warrior, after all. Xiao Tian sighed, thinking that Long Chiodao was asking why not just kill him. It's not ideal. I'm showing too much mercy here. But given that he showed tears of remorse, I'm willing to give him a chance. Long Chiodao sighed and didn't say anything more. He slowly conjured a spherical formation with his hands and covered Zhang Zhuo with it. Zhang Zhuo was baffled. What's going on? Long Chiodao explained somewhat sympathetically. This is a toy that Prince prepared for the livestock here. Green flame pigs. Green flame cow green flame sheep, etc. Your job is to make them happy by playing with them. The green flame pigs nearby already seemed eager to start. Zhang Zhuo was dumbfounded. A toy? I'm supposed to be a toy for a bunch of livestock? He felt a mix of panic and an urge to cry. Shouldn't I at least be treated as a person? At that moment, the deputy commander of the Blood Rune clan was confined in a sphere by Xiao Tian, ready to be used as a toy for the animals to play with. Seeing this, Zhang Zhuo's demeanor suddenly changed. The Blood Rune clan warriors understood instantly. Deputy commander, are you finally unable to hold back? Are you going to bring this lowly human down with you? But the next second, Zhang Zhuo suddenly knelt down, smiling brightly at Xiao Tian. Sir, regarding information, I can elaborate in detail from ten different angles and types. Which would you like to hear first? The other warriors were instantly stunned. We didn't expect this from our deputy commander. Xiao Tian stared at him coldly, then spill everything you know. Zhang Zhuo gave a bitter smile. Sir, my soul has been bound. There are many things I can't say, but whatever I can say, I will. Long Chiodao examined him and confirmed. Prince, he does indeed have a restraint restriction placed on him. Xiao Tian relented. All right, then tell us everything you can. Turns out, the Blood Rune clan is part of the Martial Spirit Army. From birth, they have been fighting in the Meteor Flame battlefield against humans, the Demon Clan, and the Sacred Dragon Clan. For them, the only purpose in life is to continuously invade and seize territories from other races. They were close to capturing the Meteor Flame battlefield when the Demon Clan army appeared to assist the humans. Among them, the Holy Demon Emperor Luo Taoyan's demonic energy completely countered the Blood Rune clan. His wife's illusions could even trap the Blood Rune clan in a false world.
world. So the reason Zhang Zhua and the others came here was to discover the holy demon emperor's powerful secret and cut off his retreat. Zhong Yangming immediately understood. Ah, that explains a lot. It also accounts for the internal conflict within the demon clan back then. But why would they do something like this? Is it for training soldiers? Long Chiodao continued to inquire. Have you ever heard of the name Bai Qing? Zhang Zhua looked surprised. Isn't she the dragon empress? Before the holy demon emperor came to the battlefield, she was the supreme commander of the humans, the demon clan, and the sacred dragon clan. During our mission, we encountered someone from the blood grudge clan who seemed to be tracking the dragon empress. However, Zhang Zhua swallowed hard, restricted by the binding on his soul before he could say more. Xiao Tian mumbled, the title of dragon empress. Why does her name sound so much cooler than mine? That's really unfair. He shook his head in dissatisfaction. Zhong Yang Ming and Wang Chiodao exchanged a glance, both understanding the underlying message, another empress. Ha, huh? no wonder. Xiao Tian sensed something was off and turned his head to look at them. What are you two looking at? Why are you giving me weird looks? It's uncomfortable. Zhong Yang Ming cleared his throat. If I remember correctly, Prince, you received money from Dragon Empress, didn't you? Xiao Tian wanted to argue that it was compensation, but the other two didn't want to listen. They both bowed slightly in praise. Only Xiao has the capability to have the Dragon Empress, the Holy Demon Empress, and the Human Empress all pay for his expenses at the same time. At that moment, Xiao Tian found them very annoying. The two were grinning. We're definitely not getting back at you for the earlier embarrassment. Really? Xiao Tian turned away, chanting to himself, I'm not mad, I'm not mad, but actually vented his frustration on Zhang Zhua. He told Zhang Zhua, originally, I was planning to rotate this Toyoyo stuffing job between you and your people, but you admitted your mistakes so well. I've decided to bestow this heavy responsibility solely upon you. How do you feel about that? Surprised? Zhang Zhua felt like he was about to have a mental breakdown. Why is this happening? Why? Soon, the green flame pig that was originally lost and thought suddenly charged at Zhang Zhua. Everyone watched as Zhang Zhua kept being thrown up into the air and falling back down, and they all felt a secret satisfaction, thinking he deserved it. Zhang Zhua cursed nonstop. Human prince, I'll get you for this. Xiao Tian didn't care. Make sure to do it with more force. I'll thank you on behalf of my adoptive father. Then, Xiao Tian instructed the village chief. Keep an eye on their condition. When they completely break down and can't function, inform me. I'll send professionals to interrogate them. The village chief was confused. Didn't that guy already confess? Long Chiodao shrugged it off. People at their level, when they have a mental breakdown, it affects their souls. They might reveal more. Zhong Yangming nodded. Exactly. If what he said deviates greatly from what he was instructed to say, it means he is lying. The village chief immediately praised. Prince, you are indeed wise. At that moment, in the royal study, Luo Feng Yuan was grinding her teeth in anger. Her fists were clenched tightly. Damn it. They managed to get away before I could even enjoy the fight. What cowards? Z Royan listened to her complaints and couldn't help but poke her in the head. You should be thankful that they didn't have reinforcements or traps. You're actually quite lucky, instead of complaining about not having a good fight. Upon hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan suddenly fell silent, tail swishing thoughtfully. Z Royan really wanted to reach out and grab it, but she restrained herself. Then, Z Royan warned again, knowing that the enemy is strong, why would you act so recklessly and be outnumbered? Couldn't you just detonate your demonic energy and let me help? Luo Feng Yuan immediately refused. Those scumbags killed 998, who was Xiao Brother's favorite. All I know is I want to crush them, not run away. The plan was supposed to be perfect. How could I be so unlucky? Z Royan almost laughed in exasperation. Your plan was flawed to begin with. But next, we'll need to allocate some manpower to find that Blood Room clan. They're a significant threat. Luo Feng Yuan nodded. Yes, we must find them. Just then, a guard rushed into report. Your Majesty, the Prince, and the Prime Minister are on their way to the Royal Study. Hearing this, Luo Feng Yuan became a bit panicked. Why did Xiao Brother suddenly come? Did he find out about 998? Z Royan could only comfort her. He's probably just coming to rest. You know his little habit, right? However, Luo Feng Yuan was not listening and began pacing back and forth, muttering, Xiao Brother must be really angry. He will surely scold me. As she spoke, an expression of excited anticipation crossed her face. Z Royan was speechless. This girl is beyond help. Absolutely beyond help. Soon after, the incense in the royal study was lit. Xiao Tian reclined in the chair and gave Z Royan a thumbs up. So comfortable. The scent of the incense here is truly unforgettable. Luo Feng Yuan curiously sniffed. Is the fragrance really that amazing? Xiao Tian pointed to his head and explained, many things in the world are fascinating. Scents can carry memories. When I smell this incense, I'm always reminded of your majesty's diligent and benevolent governance. This is your majesty's scent. Saying this, Xiao Tian winked at Zi Royan, whose face instantly turned red. She shyly turned away and mumbled, nonsense. Where would I get a scent like that? Always sweet talking, never serious. Upon witnessing the interaction between the two, Luo Feng Yuan started to feel uneasy. No, Xiao brother's attention should only be on me. I just need to confess about stealing the pig, and it'll be fine. Xiao Tian spoke first. Who said there's nothing serious? There actually is. That Blood Rune clan
plan we spoke of earlier has reappeared in numbers. According to their confession, they had other missions, but I still think they have nefarious plans towards me. They know me too well. They stole 998 and even roasted it whole over charcoal. Absolutely infuriating. Zi Royan turned her head in surprise. I didn't know Lord Xiao had an encounter with those who ran away. What happened? How did you meet them? Xiao Tian shook his head. Didn't the village chief say 998 was stolen? So I rushed over with Zhong Yangming and Wang Chiodao. Turns out, this Blood Rune clan had just roasted 998 and got caught by me. Luo Feng Yuan, seeing her efforts being claimed by someone else, became anxious. That's not how it is, Xiao brother. I'm the one who stole 998. Actually, before she could finish, Xiao Tian interrupted her. You little mischief maker, trying to take credit for this to make me angry at you? That's not happening. That criminal gang is currently being reformed at the Green Flame Farm. Don't try to fool me, you little rascal. Saying that, Xiao Tian gave Luo Feng Yuan a head pat. Z Royan was left speechless. Is there a chance that it actually was her this time? Luo Feng Yuan was dumbfounded. It was really me who did it. Why? Does that Blood Rune clan have issues? They ran away and then came back to take the blame? What's the meaning of this? Luo Feng Yuan started crying. My perfect plan. Just gone like that. However, Zhong Yangming then informed the two empresses. The Blood Rune clan also disclosed some information about the Holy Demon clan. We learned from them that the Holy Demon Emperor and his wives have all appeared on the Meteor Flame battlefield. Both of them were stunned for a moment. Luo Feng Yuan shook her head in disbelief. Impossible. Absolutely impossible. My father and mother argued incessantly back in the day, fought to the death, and died together. That's when the primordial demon kingdom began to fall into chaos. Those so-called siblings of mine were incredibly cruel. For years ago, after I awakened, I personally pierced their bodies with the holy demon scythe. Z. Royan was curious and asked, so why did your father and mother argue and fight to the death in the first place? How did they die together? Luo Feng Yuan became annoyed. Z. Bun, what's the matter with you? Can't you understand? I told you clearly. They argued and then died together. Z. Royan's temper flared up. You stupid cow, listen to my question. Why did they argue and how did they die? Luo Feng Yuan, confused, yelled back, why are you shouting? I already told you. They fought to the point of no reconciliation and died together. As Luo Feng Yuan continued speaking, her voice became softer. Noticing the stares from the three of them, she seemed to sense something was off. She covered her mouth in astonishment. Have I been repeating this content? Why is that? It felt so real back then. Those damn parents never cared for me, and those brothers and sisters were so mean. But how did they neglect me? How did they bully me? Why can't I remember any of the details? Luo Feng Yuan tried to recall, but it felt as if her brain's CPU had burned out. Xiao Tian and Zi Ruan just stared at Luo Feng Yuan's seemingly smoking head. This woman is truly bizarre, they thought. But Luo Feng Yuan still didn't want to believe it. This can't be fake. I killed those hateful brothers and sisters with my own hands, especially 18th royal brother. He was involved in the Southern Wilderness Realm plan. Xiao Tian and Zi Ruan exchanged glances and spoke in unison. It's a clone. Luo Feng Yuan was confused. Are these two teaming up to trick me? Zi Ruan sighed. When you came to the Southern Wilderness Realm, didn't you leave a clone in the Primordial Demon Kingdom? Luo Feng Yuan finally caught on. Oh, that. It's a special ability of our Holy Demon Clan. Using the demonic energy of the Holy Demon Clan, the clone not only possesses combat ability, but can also deceive others. Luo Feng Yuan suddenly realized, could it be that my 18th royal brother also used a clone? Zi Ruoyan held her hand, comforting her shocked heart. It's not confirmed yet, but since the Blood Rune Clan said so, we have to go to the Meteor Flame Battlefield to find out. Your 18th royal brother's involvement in the Southern Wilderness Realm Plan might be one of the reasons. The real truth behind this can probably only be revealed when you reunite with your family, who shouldn't even be alive. Listening to this, Luo Feng Yuan felt bewildered. Suddenly, she threw herself into Xiao Tian's arms, crying and saying, Brother Xiao, I'm so annoyed. I feel like my brain is breaking. Zi Ruoyan coughed twice, pulling Luo Feng Yuan's clothes. Wait, Lord Xiao is still recovering. He probably had a fight with the Blood Rune clan earlier. Don't tire him out. Zi Ruoyan got impatient and pulled her away. Are you an idiot? Your horns are poking people. Really? You didn't pick up by Qing's diligence, but you certainly learned her skill of not letting go. Xiao Tian watched as his two emperor's wives argued. Here they go again. But why do I feel a little happy about it? It's so nice to see them lively like this. Seven days after Zhang Zhuo and his people were captured, Xiao Tian and his two emperor's wives were enjoying a roast whole pig. Xiao Yu are floated in midair, reading the information that Zhang Zhuo and the others had provided over the last few days. According to their confessions, their main plan was to capture the descendants of Holy Demon Emperor Luo Tao Yen and obtain their blood to use in a spatial array that would open the war gate. Xiao Yu er turned to Zi Ruoyan. Zi Ruoyan then advised Luo Feng Yuan, in that case, don't act recklessly on your own from now on. We should stay together as much as possible so that we can cover for each other in case something happens. Luo Feng Yuan waved her hand impatiently. I get it. You've been going on and on. At this point, Xiao Yu er suddenly remembered something. By the way, where's old Dragon Mound? Haven't 
seen him in a while, Xiao Tian, intently focusing on the roast pig, said, he's off handling some matters, should be done soon. Meanwhile, in the starry sky of the universe, a battleship floated quietly. On board was the Blood Rune Clan's commander, Zhang Wuxuan, holding a transmission jade. Zhang Wuxing looked confused. It's been seven days. Why? I'm going bald here. Why hasn't there been any response? Zhang Wuxing quickly stepped forward to comfort him. Boss, you should eat something. This special blood meal, if not consumed, can be a burden on your body. We're in a unique situation. We need to maintain our best condition. Zhang Wuxuan clenched his teeth. There's something I don't get. I only asked for a simple task. A little scouting. A little probing. I didn't make an excessive request. Why has there been no movement? No matter how hard he thought, Zhang Wuxuan couldn't understand it. His third team captain, Zhang Wuxin, had a bitter smile on his face. How the hell would I know? My stupid cousin from the 10th team, Zhang Isen, has disappeared without a trace. And there's no news from Zhang Zhua, the deputy commander. Boss, keep your cool. No news means they're being careful and prudent. Zhang Wuxuan interrupted him angrily, flipping the table over. Careful my ass. Prudent my ass. We are the Blood Rune Clan, the bravest and most noble warriors, not a bunch of cowards. Zhang Wuxuan was so furious he was nearly hysterical. I can give them everything but women. Why haven't they returned? Wait, women? A thought suddenly struck him. Women in the demon clan are incredibly beautiful and voluptuous. These dogs must have been seduced by worldly pleasures and defected. He was convinced that must be the case. Zhang Wuxin, sweating with embarrassment, suggested, Boss, is it possible that they encountered danger down there and got wiped out? Zhang Wuxuang pointed at himself. I thought of that possibility too. But why was there no sign of a blood crystal explosion? Zhang Wuxin considered a possibility, his face turning serious. Boss, could it be that the blood crystal didn't explode because it was stopped, didn't explode? Zhang Wuxuang repeated, even I would only have the option to run when facing a blood crystal. How could there be someone strong enough here to stop it? Even if they could suppress it, there should have been some sign of an impending explosion. Could it have been eaten? Looks like I'll have to go down there myself. I want to see just how well these bastards are living it up. Immediately, Zhang Wuxuang ordered, prepare on your end. Notify the members of the first team to assemble. After meeting with our superior, I'll personally go to the holy demon realm. Just as Zhang Wuxin nodded in agreement, both men noticed something bright. When did this fragment of the world float by? Never mind, there are many similar fragments in the void. Little did they know, this fragment was actually the handiwork of Long Chiodao. Lord Xiao was right, the Blood Rune Clan's battleship is indeed outside the boundary world. They've hidden themselves quite well, using the turbulence and dense fragments in the void as cover. It took me a while to find them. At night, Zi Ruoyan, Luo Feng Yuan, and Bai Qing are having dinner. Zi Ruoyan looks calm, relieved that everyone can finally relax a bit after working hard for a while. Bai Qing, however, is scarfing down roast pork, thinking that wasting food is shameful. Seeing Luo Feng Yuan looking worried, Zi Ruoyan quickly comforts him. After we get information on the Meteor Flame battlefield, you can leave your clone in the Primordial Demon Kingdom and go find your parents for some clarity. Luo Feng Yuan replies, Of course I will. This matter has been bothering me like a ticking time bomb in my head. She takes a drink and looks at Zi Ruoyan. You seem to miss your parents, don't you? Zi Ruoyan's eyes soften with reminiscence. I do miss them. Luo Feng Yuan suggests, Well then, why not go find them? Zi Ruoyan sighs, I am the Great Flame Empress. I can't just leave. The countless citizens here are my responsibility. If my parents knew the current situation of Great Flame, they would definitely support my decision. Luo Feng Yuan softly huffs, stretches her arm, and pulls Zi Ruoyan into her embrace. I support you too, but should we hurry to the Void Battlefield? What if my parents die there? Zi Ruoyan quickly reassures her. What are you thinking? If your parents were so easily killed, why would the Blood Rune Clan go to the great expense of sneaking into the Holy Demon Realm? Tears appear in the corners of Luo Feng Yuan's eyes. But now that I think about it, your parents are also in a very dangerous situation. What if, before she could finish her sentence, Zi Ruoyan interrupts her by putting a flask to her lips. If you can't say anything helpful, shut up. No one said you're mute. Luo Feng Yuan chokes on his drink, then shoves the flask back towards Zi Ruoyan's face. What do you know? This is called preparing for the worst. Bai Qing, watching this, moves a flask of wine over. Drink, drink, drink more. You guys drink, and I'll eat. It's perfect. Then Bai Qing pushes the dining table a little further forward. This distance should keep all the food on the table safe. The familiar scene returns. Who will win this night's battle remains to be seen. Poor Zhong Yang Ming will have to prepare a nutritious soup again tomorrow. At the other end, Zhang Wuxuang arrives at a spacious hall. He bows to the deputy general sitting on the chair. Sir. Ji Chuan raises an eyebrow. Zhang Wuxuang, where's your hair? Zhang Wuxuang touches his bald head, struggling with how to explain. Do I just say I got so stressed I lost it? Would that be too embarrassing? Ah, never mind. It's not important. Ji Chuan says it's not important, but still finds it a little distracting to look at. I heard from your subordinates that we are currently in the void above the holy demon realm. Zhang Wuxuang nods quickly. Exactly, sir. Upon hearing this, Ji Chuan laughs. What a coincidence. I have some after effects from using the blood curse technique and wanted to recover on your warship. I also wanted to sense the whereabouts of the dragon
Dragon Empress. As it turns out, I sensed her in the Holy Demon Realm. Ha ha ha, this is really effortless. Old Minister Zhong Yangming observes them both, thinking the Emperor only acts like a 20-year-old when he's bickering with Luo. Suddenly, he turns and asks Xiao Tian, Young Prince, what about your parents? Xiao Tian casually slurps some soup and replies, they were killed by my adoptive father. Zhong Yangming becomes slightly awkward, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Xiao Tian is only thinking, this soup tastes amazing, the chef is truly skilled. Hearing the apology, Xiao Tian just smiles, it's alright, I didn't know until later, I used to think I was picked up from somewhere. Zhong Yangming feels a pang of discomfort, how can the young prince talk about such painful matters with a smile? It looks like you've had a hard time too, what have you been through? Xiao Tian picks up his soup bowl. In the past, my so-called adoptive father raised us like hunting dogs for his assassin organization, and I was the organization's ace, so my life was slightly easier than others. Zhong Yangming is surprised, I never thought that you were a top assassin in your original realm. Xiao Tian's expression suddenly becomes serious, you're wrong, I'm the ace among aces, but not an ace assassin, what's the difference? I rank first in the strongman list, but last on the assassin list, they even say my assassination methods are unorthodox, absolutely shameless, so, I am indeed the organization's ace, but not an ace assassin, Zhong Yangming is a bit confused, he immediately bows, may I ask, young prince, what was your assassination method like? Xiao Tian beckons Zhong Yangming closer and then asks in a low voice, let me ask you, for a successful assassination, isn't it about eliminating the target without revealing your identity and leaving no traces? Exactly, Zhong Yangming agrees. So what if I simply eliminate everyone and destroy the place? There would be no information leak and even no traces to follow, right? Zhong Yangming swallows. Well, when you put it that way, it does make sense. Xiao Tian immediately smiles. See, you agree, don't you? When I wiped out the entire blood cloud tower, you couldn't find any information, could you? Zhong Yangming feels rather uneasy but concedes. True, can't argue with that. Just then, a thud draws both of their attention. They turn to see Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan, both drunk and leaning against each other on the ground. Xiao Tian knows it's time to act. He pats Zhong Yangming on the shoulder. Ponder what I've said and what I've done. Think about it. Both of their communication tokens suddenly receive a video call. Long Chiodao informs them that he's found the lair of the Blood Rune clan. Xiao Tian and Zhong Yangming exchange glances. Let's go check it out. All right, young prince. Immediately after, Xiao Tian calls for his daughter Xiao Yuer. He then picks up both empresses and carries them into the room. After placing them on the bed and seeing them sleep soundly, Xiao Tian smiles affectionately. You both have been working hard lately. Take a good rest. Get drunk, then sleep it off. He then leans over and kisses Zi Ruoyan and Luo Feng Yuan on their foreheads. Turning back, he sees Xiao Yuer covering her eyes. What's the point of covering your eyes like that? Bai Qing then assumes her usual position and says, please go ahead. Xiao Tian delivers a palm strike to the back of her neck, knocking her out. He then covers her with a blanket and instructs Xiao Yuer, be a good girl and watch over her and your two moms. Daddy has to go take care of some business. Xiao Yuer stands with her hands behind her back. Got it. But dad, what are you going to do? Did you find out someone wants to harm you again? Xiao Tian lightly flicks Xiao Yuer on the forehead. Adult matters. Kids shouldn't ask. Annoyed, Xiao Yuer rubs her forehead, but Xiao Tian and Zhong Yangming have already slowly left. Seeing this, Xiao Yuer sets up a defensive array in the room. This should keep things safe. Now I can get a good sleep too. Meanwhile, Ji Chun of the Blood Grudge Clan looks pensive. From the information you've provided, it looks like the secret of the Holy Demon Emperor is really in his hometown. Zhang Wushuang scratches his bald head. Is the Holy Demon Realm really that mysterious? Absolutely. Although Bai Qing is affected by my blood curse technique, instinctually, she should have gone to the Eastern Sea Realm. Her choice to go to the Holy Demon Realm doesn't make sense. Plus, I'm not the only one tracking Bai Qing. Someone might already be there in the Holy Demon Realm, eliminating your teammates to take all the credit. Zhang Wushuang is dumbfounded. Is Bai Qing really that important? There are things you guys at this level wouldn't understand, which is normal. She grew up with that woman as her playmate. Zhang Wushuang is stunned. That woman? Yes. From the Sacred Alliance four years ago. Who would have thought that a 16-year-old fox demon would rise to such heights and become a woman of immense power? Bai Qing is her confidant and playmate. Capturing her would bring many advantages. Moreover, your mission to find the descendants of the Holy Demon Emperor to unlock the war gate could also be completed. You should assist me fully in this operation. You won't be left out of the rewards. You should know how generous the rewards from the Martial Spirit Army are. However, at this moment, Zhang Wushuang's face turns pale, and he points at Ji Yichuan's head, but can't utter a word. Confused, Ji Yichuan asks, why are you pointing at me? Before he could get an answer, a hand suddenly appears above his head and smashes him into the ground. Looking up in horror at the man who just appeared, Xiao Tian smiles. You were just talking about how generous the rewards are. I'm quite curious, could you explain it to me? Faced with the sudden appearance of the three men, sweat beads on Ji Yichuan's forehead. He had no idea when they appeared, and he couldn't sense their aura at all. The man leading them has an especially strong soul. Not only can he block Ji Yichuan's mental invasion, but he can also disrupt his will. His 
power is truly terrifying. Ji Chuan barely takes a moment to think before deciding to strike first. The next second, Ji Chuan clasps his hands together, and the patterns on his body erupt. The black lotus on his forehead shines. Taking advantage of Xiao Tian's momentary distraction, Ji Chuan shouts, seal, and makes hand signs. Chains appear out of nowhere and bind Xiao Tian tightly. Having done this, Ji Chuan roars, attack. Hearing this, Zhang Wushuang instantly explodes with energy, swelling to a much larger size, resembling a bald giant. Then, he smashes his fist into the ground, causing a loud explosion. The room fills with debris and smoke. Ji Chuan and Zhang Wushuang quickly retreat, but keep their eyes fixed on where Xiao Tian is. Ji Chuan then directs both palms towards Xiao Tian, channeling his blood grudge spiritual energy in a torrent toward him. Quickly, I'll buy some time. You use the blood crystal to blow them up. With a ripping sound, Zhang Wushuang unhesitatingly rips open his chest and takes out a blood crystal nurtured in his heart. As the blood crystal emerges, the blood stains on it evaporate, leaving it crystal clear and immaculately pure. Zhang Wushuang raises it high and roars, Kinsmen, fight for honor. With that, he throws the blood crystal into the thick smoke towards Xiao Tian's location. Seeing this, Ji Chuan urgently signals everyone, enough, let's go. Zhang Wushuang then takes out an array disc and places it on the ground to activate the array. Their figures start to become blurry as they prepare to teleport away. Ji Chuan grits his teeth, a cruel smile on his face. Human trash, face the explosion of the blood crystal. We look forward to your counterattacks. Ha 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 ha. After throwing the blood crystal capable of destroying an entire world, Zhang Wushuang immediately uses the array disc to teleport the entire warship to a small separate world. Ji Chuan looks around this lush, green small world. The spiritual energy here is very scarce, and the strongest beasts are only at the fourth tier. Zhang Wushuang looks at the array disc with a sad expression, saying that the emergency void transfer could only be used once and it consumed so many blood crystals, equivalent to 500 million top grade spirit stones. Ji Chuan turns to comfort him, saying not to worry. When they get back to the meteor flame battlefield, he'll explain the situation to the higher-ups. Trust me, if we hadn't acted decisively to throw the blood crystal and activated the array to escape, we would have surely died. Zhang Wushuang nods slightly. I know, that person seemed ordinary, but was able to appear silently behind you. His strength is unfathomable. Thanks to your quick decision, we were able to hide in this small world fragment. Otherwise, I can't imagine the consequences. Zhang Wushuang then instructs Zhang Wuxin, who is behind him, to mark this place with an anchor point on the warship so they can directly teleport here in the future. Zhang Wuxin promptly agrees. Then, taking advantage of the time spent setting the anchor point, they summon a projection array to see how Xiao Tian was blown up. The many Blood Rune clan warriors also want to know what kind of enemy forced the commander to use the blood crystal. Meanwhile, in a void, Xiao Tian sweeps away the smoke and debris with a burst of energy. All three stand there calmly. Long Chiodao informs the others that the person from earlier is from the Blood Grudge clan who put a blood curse technique on Bai Ching. That person decisively ordered a retreat upon encountering trouble. His control over the rhythm of the battle was impressive. Xiao Tian, however, grips the blood crystal in front of him and says, that guy had black patterns all over his body and a black lotus on his forehead. Just by looking at him, you can tell he's up to no good. His face is full of schemes, and he ran as soon as he saw me, clearly guilty. Xiao Tian then takes a chicken leg out of his storage ring and starts eating it along with the blood crystal, enjoying himself greatly. The energy in this blood crystal is much stronger than the two from the holy demon realm. It tastes even more potent. Awesome. Zhong Yangming looks bored. So does this mean we made a wasted trip? Long Chiodao carefully examines the traces in the void. Based on what happened, they used a spatial array known as Void Transfer. This array requires an anchor point to be set. Judging by the residual space fluctuations nearby, they should be hiding in some nearby space-time fragment. Hearing this, Xiao Tian is about to speak when the blood crystal he swallowed starts to explode. A rumbling sound emanates from his stomach, followed by Xiao Tian belching out a burst of flames. Only then does he clear his throat satisfactorily, patting his belly and asking, are you sure they're hiding in a nearby space-time fragment? Could this be a clue meant to mislead us? No. According to their thinking, the intense fluctuations from the explosion of that scorching crystal would completely conceal any spatial fluctuations. However, they didn't account for the trump card that is Lord Xiao. The blood crystal has become a seasoning for Lord Zhao's barbecue. Hearing this, Xiao Tian looks around and comments, but there must be at least a hundred fragments here. It's going to be a real hassle to search. Meanwhile, the people from the Blood Rune clan, who are watching Xiao Tian's audacious actions, are utterly astonished. Zhang Wuxin mutters in horror, Boss, you are actually right. The blood crystal really got eaten. Zhang Wuxuang is almost furious, clenching his fists tightly, swallowing a blood crystal. These humans really are something. Why didn't it explode and kill you, you bastard? My deputy commander, my troops, my blood crystals. Damn humans, you've wasted three of my blood crystals. I hate this. Ji Chuan of the Blood Grudge Clan watches Xiao Tian swallow the blood crystal and mutters in horror. His strength far exceeds our imagination. It's good we retreated quickly. He must be a 
20th or 21st tier practitioner in physical cultivation. This isn't right. It's hard to find such a powerful individual in the holy demon realm or other planes. Never mind. Let's not think about it for now. Keep an eye on him. I'll go rest. Once this human leaves, we'll quietly retreat. However, his subordinate Zhang Wuxin is somewhat worried. My lord, the blood crystal didn't explode, and there are residual spatial fluctuations. What if he finds us? Ji Yichuan gives a bitter smile of resignation. It should be impossible. With so many small worlds, how long would it take for him to find us? But before he could finish his sentence, his eyes widen in shock. What is that? What is this damn human doing? Xiao Tian reaches into the void with both hands and rips it apart with a tearing sound, revealing a continental module inside. Long Chiu Dao leans in to take a look. My lord, they are not here. Unfazed, Xiao Tian grabs the entire landmass and molds it into a ball. He stores it in the holy dragon relic. I'll see if I can fit this into the holy demon realm later. Upon seeing this, Long Chiu Dao almost loses his composure but mutters to himself, don't collapse, don't collapse, maintain a calm mind. This is just basic stuff for the lord. Subsequently, Xiao Tian tears open another small world, seemingly getting more enthusiastic as if he's opening a mystery box. After tearing open a gap, he asks Long Chiu Dao, is it in here? Long Chiu Dao shakes his head, no. Hearing this, Xiao Tian again molds it into a ball and tosses it to Long Chiu Dao, store this one as well. Witnessing this scene through a magical formation, Zhang Wushuang is on the verge of a breakdown. Is this even human? Tearing the world's barriers by hand is one thing, but stuffing them back in and then rolling them into a ball to take away? You're unbelievable. Zhang Wuxin hurriedly asks, Boss, what do we do? The question you're asking is quite exquisite. It's exquisite because what the hell can I do? Zhang Wuxin then turns to Ji Yichuan, but before he could get a word out, Zhang Wuxuang sees Ji Yichuan's mental state collapse, drooling like an idiot. At this moment, a warrior suddenly shouts, They're gone. They're gone. The three immediately shudder, but then breathe a sigh of relief as they see the figures getting farther away. However, just as Zhang Wuxuang wipes the cold sweat from his bald head, he sees Xiao Tian suddenly turn back and stare at their small world. Ji Yichuan is terrified, mentally screaming no, it's just a fourth tier small world, leave it alone. Yet, against his wishes, a thunderous noise erupts and a spatial rift is torn open. Ji Yichuan clenches his fists tightly, but is helpless. Xiao Tian looks through the rift at them and grins, ha ha ha, found you, you hid pretty well, actually hiding in this small world fragment. Ji Yichuan falls to the ground in terror, I'm only at the 19th tier, in front of this monster who can tear world fragments with his bare hands, I'm just a baby. Zhang Wushuang also stares at Xiao Tian in amazement, this guy is really not human, he can even protect the small world from the chaotic flow of the void, are we really going to die in despair? I can't accept this, we are the Blood Rune clan, how can we submit so easily? As a deputy general of the Meteor Flame Battlefield's Martial Spirit Army, and a warrior of the Blood Grudge clan, he should think like me, to die in battle is the only way home, thinks Zhang Wushuang, but the next second, Ji Yichuan suddenly prostrates himself on the ground, a steamed human powerhouse, your strength and abilities have completely conquered me, Zhang Wushuang is stunned, I didn't expect you to be this kind of deputy, Xiao Tian is also somewhat confused, not quite understanding the situation, Zhong Yang Ming is also perplexed and can only think that this guy is smart, when the situation turned against him, he immediately bowed his head and begged for mercy, Ji Yichuan lifts his head with a sycophantic smile, esteemed sir, my name is Ji Yichuan, I am the deputy general of the Meteor Flame Battlefield, at the 19th tier, I am also an elder of the Blood Grudge Clan, and I'm quite skilled in various kinds of curses, I'm hardworking, reliable, and very well informed, just as Xiao Tian is about to say something, Ji Yichuan interrupts him, esteemed sir, you strike me as a person of high moral standing and great reputation, surely, you're a benevolent and respected figure, I deeply regretted my previous actions, and am quite remorseful, now the heavens have brought you before me, offering me a chance to switch sides and serve you, would you be willing to let me seize this opportunity, hearing Ji Yichuan's colorful and impassioned plea, Xiao Tian, Long Chiu Dao, and Zhong Yang Ming are all stunned, this guy really has no shame, seeing them silent, Ji Yichuan continues, you may not know this, esteemed sir, but we came here at a great cost, not only to obtain the heir of holy demon emperor Luo Tao Yen, and to open the gate of war, but also to link the gate of war of the meteor flame battlefield, and the holy demon realm, to facilitate the continuous deployment of troops and conquer 124 realm worlds in the void, finishing, Ji Yichuan feels quite smug, now, I don't believe you won't keep me by your side, once I'm close to you, I'll find the right moment to steal important information, unaware of Ji Yichuan's ulterior motives, Zhang Wushuang can't help but verbally accuse him of being shameless, Ji Yichuan rolls his eyes, but the next second, Xiao Tian suddenly speaks, you're a terrifying person, you're scheming and morally low, which disgusts me, I won't give you the opportunity the heavens have offered you, you can't stay, Ji Yichuan is completely baffled, why, I just made such a good presentation, not only did I surrender, but I also provided valuable information, where am I scheming or morally low, seeing as you've just given me information, I'll let you die understanding, this is our first meeting, yet you know that I love doing good deeds, which suggests you've already conducted thorough research
research on me. Yet now you act as if you don't know me, likely plotting something sinister in secret. Also, you are just lowering your head and smirking, your eyes shifting around. Clearly, you're up to no good. Ji Yichuan is puzzled. I was lowering my head. How could he possibly see? Seeing his expression, Xiao Tian slightly smiles. See, I got you right there. Plus, you spilled all your plans without me even asking. Isn't it to get me, the yet-to-be son-in-law of the holy demon emperor, to act? Moreover, your behavior of betraying your side for personal gain is utterly disgraceful. If I spare you today and keep you by my side, who knows when you'll betray me? As he speaks, Xiao Tian suddenly reaches out, grabbing Ji Yichuan's neck. Enough. The more we talk, the scarier this gets. Then with a loud bang, Ji Yichuan is firmly pressed into the ground by Xiao Tian. He suddenly turns his head. Oh right, if he dies, Bai Qing's memory blood curse technique will be lifted, right? Long Chodao nods. Yes, my lord. His death will naturally lift the blood curse technique. Ji Yichuan barely manages to speak. Boss, I have something else to say. But Xiao Tian seems not to hear him, continuing to talk to himself. That's good. Once Bai Qing's memory returns, the compensation for the initially damaged warship I had seized can be finalized. Ji Yichuan completely breaks down. So, you're killing me just to restore Bai Qing's memory and then collect on a shuttle's cost? And this shuttle was even seized from us? Ji Yichuan is utterly baffled. His soul seems to drift away. Esteemed sir, I can offer you more money. 100 million. 1 billion. You are Luo Taoyan's son-in-law. I have a lot of information about the Holy Demon Emperor. Please spare me. I can be useful. Unfortunately, Xiao Tian is already deaf to his pleas. Ji Yichuan can only curse in his mind. Damn it. I'm really screwed this time. This human is insane. He's utterly mad. The humans I've played to death before probably thought the same about me. It's karma. With that thought, Ji Yichuan's spirit completely gives in, and he dies instantly. Seeing this, Zhang Wushuang clenches his fists. Good riddance. Long Chiodao glances at him. This Blood Grudge clan member deserved it. Xiao Tian turns to the remaining Blood Rune clan members. As for you, in the next second, he vanishes. A series of thudding sounds are heard as all the Blood Rune clan members are severely injured, lying on the ground shivering, their powers completely gone. Xiao Tian gestures to Long Chiodao. Store them in the Holy Dragon Relic for now. The Green Flame Farm is expanding, and we're short on manpower. Long Chiodao, with a face of compassion, compared to Ji Yichuan, they are lucky enough to live, even if it's a miserable life. At this moment, after settling matters with Zhang Wushuang and others, Xiao Tian arrives in their warship, observing the inscriptions covering the entire space. Long Chiodao informs the two, the person who built this warship is very powerful. Ji Yichuan, who is now dead, was nothing but an ant in their presence. Then the three of them arrive in front of the formation base. Long Chiodao takes a closer look. As long as we meet the conditions for this formation base, the so-called war gate can be built. The ship's cabin is empty but, thanks to spatial formation enhancements, it can hold over 10,000 people. The technology to build the war gate is quite mature. Using the supreme holy demon's blood as a medium is indeed a good choice. With Lord Luo's blood, we can directly create a war gate. They can come through it, and we can also reach their location. Xiao Tian yawns out of boredom. If that's the case, what are we waiting for? Let's open the war gate and go. We have to get back for breakfast before dawn, especially Zhong Yangming. Cooking takes time. Zhong Yangming awkwardly rubs his forehead. Prince, you didn't really have to point that out. Long Chiodao reminds Xiao Tian, we need Lord Luo's blood as a guide, or else we can't activate the formation. Xiao Tian smiles slightly, pulls out a bottle from a spatial rift. I've got some right here. Zhong Yangming and Long Chiodao are both stunned looking at the blood in the bottle. Where did this come from? Just got some before we left. Just in case, Xiao Tian responds. Both men share a speechless glance. The prince is unusually proactive and diligent. Next, Long Chiodao Chiodao drips the blood onto the formation. A loud boom is heard as the formation activates. A huge beam of light engulfs the three of them. Meanwhile, in a distant void battlefield, spatial fluctuations begin to appear over a city. A drop of blood vibrates continuously. The guarding Blood Rune Clan soldiers sense something is wrong. Go and inform the general. Something's wrong with the war hall. On the other side, within the general's mansion, a figure is trapped within a formation, guarded by many soldiers. The figure struggles constantly, almost breaking free from the formation's binding. Unfortunately, Blood Rune Clan's General Zhang Buki returns. As he slams his big blade into the ground, the formation is immediately strengthened, and the figure is once again forcefully bound. Zhang Buki taunts with a smile, You're a formidable man indeed. I step out for just a moment, and the formation nearly couldn't suppress you. It seems there's really no way around it, but to watch you around the clock. Holy Demon Emperor, Luo Tao Yin. Luo Tao Yin lifts his head and grins. Zhang Buki, if you have the guts, let me go and we'll fight it out. Let's see who ends up worse for wear. Zhang Buki only smiles.
smiles. Taunts don't work on me. We went to great lengths to capture you. Luo Tao Yan spits in disdain. Coward. Zhang Buki remains unfazed. From the initial single layer of the formation to the now extreme seven layered formation. And now I personally have to suppress you. You're truly remarkable. Luo Tao Yan. The stronger you get, the more stable your blood can make our war gate. Of course, I'd advise you to surrender your blood power willingly. Stop being stubborn. Luo Tao Yan smirks. If you want it, come and get it yourself. To his surprise, Zhang Buki laughs. Your confidence comes from your blood power being fortified by some force. But that secret is about to be cracked by us. Our superiors have paid a heavy price to send a void warship above the holy demon realm. From what our intelligence shows, your holy demon clan hasn't deployed in full strength, has it? As Zhang Buki finishes speaking, Luo Tao Yan falls momentarily silent before erupting in a terrifying aura. He goes into a burst state, and the two horns on his head look even more ferocious. Seeing this reaction, Zhang Buki laughs even more heartily. Exactly. If he wasn't a beloved descendant, why would he be placed in a safe zone? Sadly, that safe zone is no longer safe. Perhaps your descendant has already been captured and had his blood drawn for the war gate. Hearing this, Luo Tao Yan roars in anger. If anything happens to little Yuan, I swear I'll slaughter your entire clan. Unfortunately, as the formation strengthens its suppression, Luo Tao Yan once again falls to his knees, powerless. Zhang Buki continues to tempt Luo Tao Yan. If you surrender your blood power and bring your entire clan to join our martial spirit army, I can call off the operation in the holy demon realm, and you'll be rewarded by the higher-ups. Luo Tao Yan bursts out laughing. Ha ha ha. Zhang Buki, don't be delusional. We of the demon clan will never bow down and scrimp for life unless we die in battle. As you said, little Yuan might face a catastrophe, but I believe, as the daughter of this emperor, she will not yield. Zhang Buki grits his teeth. This guy is like a stone in a dung pit, stinky and hard. Just then, a rumbling sound is heard within the city. Luo Tao Yan, you really don't know when to give up. Wasting effort, Zhang Buki observes. Luo Tao Yan doesn't move. The commotion just now wasn't his doing. He looks puzzled as well. If it wasn't him, then who else would act here? At that moment, a soldier suddenly runs in. General, something's happened. Zhang Buki slaps him without a word. Calm down. What's with the panic? The young soldier covers his mouth, looking wrong. There's a human man wearing a strange mask, and he's hunting our people everywhere. Zhang Buki's first reaction is disbelief. The city's defense is as solid as a rock. How could a human have breached it? Luo Tao Yan, suppressed by the formation, also doesn't believe it. Are there really humans that strong in the meteor flame battlefield? Moreover, the city's defensive formation is still intact, without a single sign of being broken. Zhang Buki waves his hand. Find out what's really going on. Don't speculate because of some minor disturbance. The young soldier quickly explains, I don't know where this human came from, but he's wearing a creepy mask. He attacks us on sight, and didn't come from outside the city. Zhang Buki's brow furrows. He has a bad feeling. He then conjures the mansion's formation in midair. I want to see just how formidable this human is, to be worthy of the term hunting dot. Soon, three figures appear in the formation. He is wearing a black robe and a black ghost mask. Zhang Buki looks at the trio in surprise. Not just one, but also the sacred dragon clan, but there doesn't seem to be anything special about them. He questions the soldier before him. Is this the hunting you panicked about? These are just rats who've snuck in from somewhere. Before Zhang Buki finishes speaking, a loud rumbling noise erupts. The masked human does something, and a bunch of buildings are instantly demolished. Dust rises, and the Blood Moon clan soldiers scatter in fear. See that? Perfect assassination technique. Draw out your target, then eliminate them. With that, Xiao Tian lightly pushes off the ground, soaring into the sky. With a few whooshes, his figure moves like a ghost, instantly catching up to the fleeing Blood Moon clan soldiers. These soldiers explode into blooms of blood in midair, while the rest of the people scatter in all directions, frantically trying to escape. Yet Xiao Tian casually walks up to an intact building, picks up a long knife, and with a light wave, a violent whirlwind reduces the building in front of him to ruins. The long knife can't withstand Xiao Tian's power and shatters into pieces, which he casually discards. A Blood Moon clan soldier hides behind the rubble, thinking, the most dangerous place is the safest. If I hide in the ruins that we're going to destroy, he'll never find me. Xiao Tian brags to Long Chiu Dao and Zhong Yang Ming, see this? My assassination technique is so efficient, and it leaves no trace. I don't understand why the Assassin's Guild even expelled me. Zhang Buki watches this and asks the young soldier beside him, why don't you all leave the city? The young soldier helplessly spreads his hands. The formation has been altered. It's fully sealed. We can't escape. Everyone's worried about revealing your position and doesn't dare to approach here. General, it's best if you find a way to move Holy Demon Emperor away from the Vanguard City. He will hunt us down sooner or later. Zhang Buki mutters to himself, damn it, how could it be such bad timing? Right when we were about to open the war gate, this human shows up. His strength might even exceed my 20th level by a bit. The young soldier continues to urge the general, time is of the essence. Better make a decision soon. Luo Tao Yan slowly stands up. It's not that he doesn't want to move, but that he can't. To move, the formation has to be lifted. Unfortunately, once the formation is opened, suppressing him won't be easy. So, he 
stuck in a difficult position, he can only order his three deputy generals to intervene to try and stall Xiao Tian's progress and buy some time. With that, the blood-colored patterns all over Zhang Buki's body suddenly ignite. His level 20 aura bursts forth, and as his momentum continues to rise, a blood-colored formation appears above everyone's heads. The next second, the formation chains that were originally locking Luo Taotian start to converge towards Zhang Buki. Luo Taotian is taken aback, wondering, what is he trying to do? Then with a few squelching sounds, the chains actually pierce into Zhang Buki's body. Zhang Buki clenches his fists, seemingly enduring great pain. Luo Taotian's eyes widen in shock as he clearly feels his bloodline power being absorbed by Zhang Buki. As time passes, the blood-colored flames around Zhang Buki gradually take on a golden hue. A blood rune clan soldier behind him can't help but speak. General, this will affect the master's plan. Zhang Buki snaps back. Quickly carry out my orders. If we don't kill the invading enemies, any so-called plans for later will be a joke. A loss in bloodline power is okay. We can find some rare treasures for him to consume and recover later. Feeling his power being absorbed, Luo Taotian feels weak and falls to his knees. His body trembles uncontrollably, and he's somewhat worried. If Zhang Buki absorbs all of his power, will the human still be able to resist? Luo Taotian can't help but look up at the formation, looking at the human warrior who brought hope. Meanwhile, Xiao Tian is explaining to Long Chiu Dao and Zhong Yang Ming, the essence of my assassination technique is to feign weakness. Don't be in a hurry to show all your battle power. Take it step by step. You must accurately control the power you reveal. Make the big fish think you're nearly at their level, and then continually provoke and stimulate the opposition. Make those big fish take the bait and come out to teach you a lesson. Both of them look helpless, nodding as if to say, you're awesome, whatever you say goes. But the next second, three 19th level Blood Moon clan soldiers land with thuds behind Xiao Tian. They are the strongest forces under General Zhang Buki. The leading deputy general holding a long spear shouts, human, this way is blocked. Xiao Tian's eyes light up, pointing at the three individuals as he tells Long Chiu Dao and Zhong Yang Ming, see, the big fish have come, haven't they? And judging by their actions and blocking us, the biggest fish must be up ahead. The two are puzzled. Why is it that when the prince says to let the targets reveal themselves, they just do? The prince is making a show of arrogance and destruction to bait the big fish, and lo, and behold, three big fish fall from the sky. What is going on? On the other side, Zhang Buki stretches his body comfortably, feeling the surging power within him. He can't help but exclaim, worthy of being the holy demon emperor. Just a bit of absorbed power has made me incredibly strong, a strength I've never felt before. Unfortunately, it will only last for an hour. Luo Taotian, looking weak, lifts his head, even more worried than before. Can the human really resist such a strong Zhang Buki? Zhang Buki seems to notice his worry and laughs. Next up is dealing with that human. Just as he finishes speaking, the wall in front of him bursts open, dust flying everywhere. Zhang Buki wonders how they arrived so quickly. Did they just happen to miss the three deputy generals he had arranged? Another explosion sound, debris flying. Both Luo Taotian and Zhang Buki are surprised at the emerging figure. When could a level 20 take down three level 19s? Xiao Tian appears, carrying a blood-colored long spear, and behind him are the three level 19 deputy generals, now motionless as if they were three dead dogs. At this moment, Zhang Buki takes a deep breath and asks, who exactly are you? Xiao Tian throws down his spear, smashing the three lifeless deputy generals to the ground. Dad calls me the supreme benevolent king of hell deity. My name is Xiao Tian. Saying this, Xiao Tian adjusts his mask and his aura explodes, creating an oppressive atmosphere. Upon hearing this, Zhang Buki's whole body's blood runes ignite, burning with a purple-red flame. I am Zhang Buki, the station general of the Meteor Flame Battlefield Martial Spirit Army. But who is this supreme benevolent king of hell deity? Why haven't I heard of him before? Xiao Tian turns to look at Luo Taotian behind him. It seems the only audience who can spread the message is this one here. Xiao Tian gestures towards him. Come on. Zhang Buki suddenly laughs. It seems the guards aren't completely ignoring this battlefield, after all. They even sent such a powerful reinforcement. Quite unexpected. Xiao Tian waves his hand impatiently. Enough talk. If you want to fight, let's fight. Only the weak speak nonsense. Zhang Buki becomes agitated. If you're seeking death, then I'll grant it to you. The more I look at you, the more annoying you become. It's infuriating. Zhang Buki growls, reigniting his aura, and suddenly expands into a five-meter tall giant. With a roaring shout, Zhang Buki unleashes Crimson Flame Sky Slash. He's starting off with his strongest move, observes Luo Taotian, urgently warning Xiao Tian, be careful, his attack can bypass your defense and directly burn your spiritual energy, weakening you. It's too late. As the attack approaches, a massive roar resounds in the sky, filled with towering flames. Zhang Buki gives a satisfied smirk, the game is set, stripped of all your spiritual energy by my holy demon flame. What will you counter my dual blades with? Ha ha ha, pathetic human. As the dust and smoke clear, Zhang Buki's laughter abruptly stops. Xiao Tian, at some point, has moved behind him, grasping his dual blades. With a light squeeze, the blades snap into two pieces. Before Zhang Buki
Loki can react. A silver light flashes by, and a cold sensation emerges at his wrist, blood spurting from the severed parts. Xiao Tian makes his next move, spiritual power enveloping the broken blade as it grazes past Zhang Buki's knees. All Zhang Buki feels is a sharp pain followed by a sense of weakness in his knees, causing him to kneel before Xiao Tian. Before the shocked expression on his face could change, Xiao Tian lightly says, No need for such formalities if you know you're wrong. As General Zhang Buki lies helplessly before him, Xiao Tian casually tosses the broken blade to the ground. The blade bounces off the ground, brushing past Luo Taoyan's face. For a moment, it seemed like Luo Taoyan saw his ancestors. The next second, there's a cracking sound, and Luo Taoyan feels all his restraints vanish. The array chains that bound him disintegrate into the ether. Unable to resist, Luo Taoyan takes another look at Xiao Tian. This human is incredibly strong. Zhang Buki is held by the chin by Xiao Tian, disbelief filling his eyes. I've absorbed Luo Taoyan's power. Why was I so easily defeated? Xiao Tian smiles. Weaklings from foreign races, remember my name. Zhang Buki breaks into a sweat. What is this human planning to do? With a slight effort, a crack is heard. The powerful Zhang Buki loses his life, filled with profound confusion. Shouldn't I have been captured and interrogated for intelligence? Maybe traded for resources or hostages? Why did he simply snap my neck? Luo Taoyan looks at the completely dead Zhang Buki. He's really dead? This all feels so unreal. Xiao Tian then hoists Luo Taoyan over his shoulder. We shouldn't stay here long. And also grabs Zhang Buki's corpse. With a leap, they fly through the air, covering a considerable distance before Xiao Tian finally stops. This should be a safe place. Luo Taoyan slaps his puzzled head. Not only is this human incredibly strong in combat, but he's also fast. Where is he weak? Thinking this, Luo Taoyan bows slightly. Thank you for saving me. I am eternally grateful. Xiao Tian waves it off. It's nothing. You appear to be powerful, yet you were captured alone. If you return alone, your comrades might suspect you've been turned. So, let me help you all the way. This foreigner has a high status. You can take him back as proof. Luo Taoyan is momentarily speechless. Just as he's about to reveal that he's actually the holy demon emperor, Xiao Tian interrupts. There's no need to thank me. When you go back, recount everything that happened in detail. Make it clear that it was I, Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity Xiao Tian, who saved you. If anything happens, feel free to put it on me, Supreme Benevolent King of Hell Deity. Got it? At that moment, Luo Taoyan suddenly grips Xiao Tian's hand, looking at him earnestly. I've always enjoyed making friends with heroes from all walks of life. Brother Xiao, why don't we become sworn brothers right here and now? Seeing Luo Taoyan's eager expression, Xiao Tian considers it. From the way you carry yourself, you do seem like a bold and carefree individual. Why not become sworn brothers? Having a brother makes one's name even more impressive. With this thought, Xiao Tian firmly grasps Luo Taoyan's hand. You seem older than me, so you should be the elder brother. I'll call you big brother. Luo Taoyan is overjoyed. Little brother. The two share a heartfelt moment, basking in the warmth of their newfound friendship. Just then, Xiao Tian receives a message. The gate of war is about to close. Xiao Tian's expression changes changes slightly. This isn't good. We might not have enough time. Big brother, something urgent has come up. My wife is unwell at home, and I must return before dawn. Let's part ways for now and reunite later. With that, Xiao Tian quickly departs, disappearing from Luo Taoyan's sight in an instant. Watching him go, Luo Taoyan thinks, this strong little brother of mine is also quite impulsive. He didn't even let me introduce myself. However, being this strong and caring for his family, his siblings are indeed fortunate. Far away, Luo Fengyuan suddenly sneezes, sensing that something is amiss. After some introspection, Luo Taoyan feels his strength gradually returning. Purple flames burn furiously around him, cleansing his body. His originally dark purple hair flows down his back, revealing without a doubt the grandeur of the holy demon emperor. Xiao Tian quickly rejoins them. As soon as he lands, he immediately asks, How did it go? Is everything settled? Long Chiodao looks weary. The Blood Rune clan members hiding in the shadows have completed their donations. They've already moved all their resources out of the city. Hearing this, Xiao Tian immediately decides, then let's go. We need to hurry back before the gate of war collapses. Saying this, the three of them look back at the array platform behind them. Long Chiodao points to the gate of war. It's still not stable enough. Whether it's the blood on this side of the array or Empress Luo's blood on the other side, it's too little. Otherwise, the gate of war could have lasted much longer. All right, let's go. Instantly, the three quickly pass through the gate of war. The scenery changes in a flash, and within a second, the three are back inside the cabin of their void warship. Just a few seconds after they've landed, the gate of war behind them bursts open with a bang, dissipating into the cosmos. Xiao Tian lets out a relieved sigh. That was close. Who knows how long it would have taken us to get back otherwise. Then Xiao Tian suddenly asks, By the way, how did the fundraising go? How much did we get? Zhong Yangming is momentarily puzzled before laughing and spreading his hands. Too much to count quickly. 
but we can be sure that the overall level of the holy demon realm will greatly improve with these resources. Xiao Tian removes his mask. It looks like the Blood Rune clan has realized their mistakes. I'm relieved to see them actively expressing their goodwill. He then asks, Did you tell the Blood Rune clan that after you modified the array and we leave the Vanguard Battle City, there will be an explosion? Long Chiodao's expression stiffens, and he blinks. I should have maybe mentioned it. Xiao Tian takes a deep breath, looking a bit awkward. What do you mean by maybe? Zhong Yangming finally catches on, looking at Long Chiodao in astonishment. The array will explode after you've modified it. Long Chiodao is somewhat puzzled. Wasn't it Xiao Tian who said that we have to destroy all traces after the assassination? Xiao Tian falls silent for a long time before finally speaking. They should leave after making the donation, right? They won't think they're safe just because they've donated and then stay there, will they? This Blood Rune clan, they shouldn't be that foolish, right? Zhong Yangming and Long Chiodao both wear serious expressions. They're definitely not foolish. They should have all left by now. After saying this, the cabin falls into silence once more for a long time. Finally, Xiao Tian speaks up. I'm sure it's fine. Let's hurry home. It's almost time for breakfast. On the other side, at the Meteor Flame battlefield, a group of Blood Rune clan warriors is gathered together. They are sitting on the ground, trying to calm their fears when suddenly, one of them pats his chest and says to his companion, Why do I feel a bit uneasy? Should we hurry up and leave this troublesome place? But the other man looks disdainful. What's there to worry about? We saw that masked monster leave through the gate of war. Are you still afraid? Yeah, let's take a good rest, then clean up the entire city. This is the most suitable area for setting up the gate of war. Once the higher-ups send people over, we can earn merit for holding our ground and not retreating. Suddenly, a squad leader asks in a daze. That's strange. Why has it suddenly gotten bright? Boom! A massive mushroom cloud rises into the sky. At that moment, all of the Blood Rune clan members met their grandmothers. 